the legislature, the judiciary. Division of powers. It endowed as that parliament shall be responsible for law making. President and now down. First of all, politically, what power does the present secretary have writing to the clerk of parliament? And not the clerk present himself writing directly to the speaker of parliament as is required of our standing order so that officially this can be read as communication from the president so ideally this paper means nothing and should be ignored by the clerk because communication to parliament must be communication signed by the president addressed to the speaker of parliament as is required of our standing order whether old or new. Unfortunately, Mr. Speaker went beyond expressing this, this disagreement and rather pronounced judgment on what in his view was wrong. Mr. Speaker did not only stop there, he also used very unsavory words to describe Mr. President. We believe that in a democracy, we have a right to disagree on views expressed, but we do not have right to say things to denigrate another. This, we think, is very unacceptable. Now, let me go to get into the main issue. Mr. Speaker said that Mr. President was undermining democracy and that he should have resorted to the Constitution in making certain communications to the House. We in the majority beg to disagree on the position taken by him. He said he was not going into the matter as that would undermine the outcome of same. But we all know that the very issue that was raised by Honorable Dafir Mepo had to do with the continuing ministers who had been reshuffled to other ministries. The issue of constitutionality of certain nominees had been determined by way of they going through the vetting process, a report coming before the House for debate and final decision. So for me, these are two unrelated issues. Whether the bill meets the test of constitutionality is one that will be examined only within the four corners of the Constitution of Ghana, within the compass of the law, the Constitution of Ghana. Mm. It has nothing to do with my personal belief or my personal um, abhorrence of the practice of homosexuality and, of course, my prayer that there will definitely not be recognition of gay marriages. And the President himself has stated clearly that it will definitely not be his time that gay marriages will be criminalized, uh, will be per permitted in this country. It will continue to remain criminal. The laws of, of Ghana, as far as we are concerned, on, on marriage, recognize a marriage as a union between a man and a woman, and so shall it be. But the question as to the other aspects of the bill, whether they meet a test of society, is a different, a different issue. That is why I would respectfully pray the men of God and the religious groups who are um, throwing their way behind the bill to distill clearly the lines to be able to draw distinction between what the bill actually stands for and what the practice of most society also is about and how they are it and all that. I think that they have been, with all respect sometimes, um, you can see clearly that they have been um, utilized by some politicians for their political ends. Be that as it may, honorable members, I also bring to your attention the receipt of a process from the court titled Robson Nelson Eche K. Dafiamapo versus, versus the Speaker of Parliament and the Attorney General, suit number J1 slash 12 slash 2024, which process was served on the 19th, that is yesterday, March 2024, and an injunction motion on notice seeking to restrain the speaker 
from proceeding with the vetting and approval of the names of the persons submitted by His Excellency the President until the provisions of the Constitution are satisfied. In the light of this process, the House is unable to continue to consider the nominations of His Excellency the President to use the language of the Attorney General and Minister for Justice, quote, in the spirit of upholding the rule of law, unquote, until, until after the determination of the application for interlocutory injunction by the Supreme Court. Honorable members, this is the precedent that is being set by His Excellency the President for all Ghanaians to follow. Well, all of what we have played to you this morning defines and clearly sets the premise for this conversation this morning here on Key Point. The various aspects you've seen that the Attorney General speak, also the minority majority in Parliament, ending with the penultimate by the Speaker of Parliament. The decision not to go ahead with approval of the Ministerial and Deputy Ministerial nominees who were vetted by Parliament. Good morning. Welcome to Key Point here on TV3 also live on 3FM 92.7 and a number of uh, radio stations across the country. On this program, we discuss the most topical issues of the week with our well-informed panelists who have the nation at heart and ensuring that what we say helps in the growth and development of this country in many ways. We are live on DSTV channel 279, also on Facebook and X, all across the world on 3news.com. This week has been characterized by a looming clash between the titans, the legislature and, and the executive. The Speaker of Parliament, as you just saw, Alban Sumana comes for Bagman, and the President, President Kofuado, taking jabs at each other over, over the latter's refusal to receive and sign into law the anti-LGBTQ plus bill, which was recently approved by Parliament. Now, the speaker saw this strongly worded statement that he read on the floor on Wednesday, described as contemptuous the president's letter directing parliament to cease and desist from transmitting the controversial bill you know, to the presidency. Now, we'll delve deeper on the back and forth between the speaker and the president and also a letter from the Attorney General insisting that there is nothing that legally stops Parliament from approving the ministerial nominees uh, who are now victims of this impasse. This conversation this morning we would have together with, in fact, the plaintiff in this interlocutory injunction suit that the Speaker referred to, Nelson Eche. Dafia Mepo, the Member of Parliament for the South Dai constituency and also private legal practitioner, is one of the sponsors of this anti-LGBTQ plus bill. He's going to be joining us in the studio to have a conversation all of the, how things have played out this week together with all my other lawyers who are going to be joining us plus representatives of political analysts as well. So we'll have a conversation this morning. Stay with us here on Key Point. Also, the Electoral Commission of Ghana has clarified the concerns that some of its biometric verification devices, BVDs, have gone missing and, and may potentially affect the integrity of the 2024 general elections. We'll look into, into these allegations and, in fact, the responses of the Electoral Commission for that matter on the back of the minority leader, Kessela Tufosin's concerns earlier this week. And then yesterday, we got to know that some 28 BVDs have not been returned to the store of the Electoral Commission after the 
district level elections. We will have a conversation this morning. So, make a date as always. We are live on TV3 Ghana on Facebook, so you can connect with us. Apologies last week, we couldn't do so. We're all victims of the situation with the internet, but we are back live on air. My name is Alfred Okansi. On behalf of the rest of the team, welcome to Key Point. We'll be back shortly after this quick break. The conversation starts right now. Stay with us. It's a perfect opportunity this Ramadan Karim to make it an extra special season for your family and friends with Melcom. With affordable products ranging from groceries, electronics, homeware, kitchenware, furniture and more, you've got all your needs sorted. Ramadan Mubarak to our Muslim family. Terms and conditions apply. Melcom Jobs. This is a 3 FM podcast. You know what time of the year it is. These are the men who matter. And they are the guys who are going to be showing us what they are made of. That clearly tells you that these gentlemen are ready. 3 FM tour to Ghana. This is Hot Issues, your passport to the most compelling conversations of our time. We go one-on-one -on -one with the movers and shakers, the thought leaders and the game changers. We ask the questions that matter and we don't back down. Tonight on Hot Issues, I sit with the man at the center of corruption investigations. Join me on Hot Issues here on TV3. Hot Issues show Sundays at 10 p.m. only on TV3. TV3, first in news. This season, two individual bonds will be built. Love will exist. Betrayal will be served. Ready. The most controversial reality show hits your screen. Perfect match extra. 50,000 Ghana cities at stake. If you are 20 years and above and want to find genuine love, join our private screening to be part of the show. Screening will take place at the TV3 premises. Kanda, go to forms.pmextra.tv to pay a registration fee of 500 Ghana cities and register with your details and professional photograph of yourself. Private screening for ladies will take place on the 30th of March and the 31st of March for the gentlemen. Love, betrayal, heartbreak, and triumph. This April, witness the journey of a lifetime. Perfect Match Extra Season 2, coming soon on TV3 and pmextra.tv. After a challenging eviction Sunday, prepare to be amazed by the remaining talented kids contestants as they showcase their unique freestyle performances this week. Tune for an exciting STEM segment and ensure your favorite contestant stays in the competition by dialing star 713 star 13 hash or downloading the TV2 reality app to vote. The winner of this year's Talenta Kids competition will embark on a 10 day educational and talent development trip to the Netherlands, powered by the CTIW Foundation, impacting our generation today and beyond. Talented kids, free to play. Talented kids shows on.
on TV3 Sunday at 4 p.m. Powered by Indomie. Sponsored by Coco Plus. Deluxe Acrylic Paint. Frutelli Calipo. Vitamilk. Pepsodent Cavity Fighter. CTIW Foundation. CTIW Foundation. And supported by... She's got over 20 years experience in the world of architecture, started her education here in Ghana, Wesley Girls for that matter, and continued in the United Kingdom. She's back here in Ghana doing tremendously well in the world of architecture. From the age of um, about 8 or 10, okay. my dad had a house built, and I used to go to sites with him here in Ghana. In Ghana. Okay. So that was my first introduction to construction. She was the consultant and the woman in charge of renovating the National Museum, which currently has become a national pride for all of us. Alice Asafoje is our guest here on Today's Woman for this week, Saturday, 3 p.m. right here on TV3 with me, Cookie. Stay tuned and please don't miss it. Today's Woman with Cookie T show Saturdays at 3 p.m. on TV3. Brought to you by Latex Foam. This call. Hello there, my name is Princess Fathia Nkrumah and join me this weekend on The Ladies Circle. Lisa Dominic actually made a statement. She's looking forward to seeing African actors earn royalties for their work. The NFA will have to engage with directors and actors and then based on those um, conversations decide on who would be best suited to helping the guild and then we move from there. But for Ghana, I don't know, I just don't see light at the end of the tunnel. I'm worried. It's very problematic. African oh, Games. Oh, wait, um, wait, oh, jump on the treadmill. is out. You jump on the treadmill and type the numbers and then you run. Yes. Have you ever disliked a movie everyone seemed to love? Yeah, every now and again I'm thinking, yeah. what's a yeah. crap? Yeah. Yeah. The Ladies Circle shows this Saturday at 6 p.m. on TV3. Brought to you by Yaz Sanitary Pad, Onga, Yum Vita, MTN, Cowbell, Our Milk. Luckily, the gentleman says he's afraid. He's afraid of tomorrow. He's afraid of what could happen. But it's not happened yet. The ex-boyfriend has transferred all his properties into my wife's name where she manages all his estates and affairs. The probability that the reconnection could happen is very high. There is no one in this world other than your ex, somebody's wife, to cry out your divorce issues. When you are married, you're supposed to establish boundaries. And this is how far the boundary shoots. And so when something interferes with these boundaries, you should be able to rise up and say, no, darling, that's not what we agreed on. She may have the best of intentions, but remember, the road to hell, they say, is paved with good intention. Confessions shows on Saturdays at 9.30 p.m. on TV3. Brought to you by MTN. Get ready for an epic adventure. Join TV3 on a two-day expedition of the Western Wonders of Ghana as part of the Ghana Month celebration happening from Friday 29th to Saturday 30th of March. This is Journey to the West. Explore the rich history of Cape Coast Castle. Walk through the lush forest of Kaku. Witness the breathtaking Inzulezu Stilt Village for a journey through time. Immerse yourself in the magic of bonfires, groove to sensational music performances and experience the beats with DJs on rotation, indulge in mouth-watering dishes and refreshing drinks while creating unforgettable memories. Don't miss the chance to celebrate Ghana's beauty and culture. Join us for two days filled with adventure, culture and a whole lot of fun. Journey to the West. To book a seat for this Odyssey, call 0264-932732. It's Journey to the West. Hashtag Ghana Month Celebration. Hashtag Journey to the West. Hashtag Explore Ghana. Brought to you by Motor Guinness.
Welcome back to Key Point here on TV3. We are live on 3FM 92.7, also on TV3 Ghana, on Facebook, DSTV channel 279, all across the world on 3news.com. If you're just joining us, as I laid the premise earlier, a lot of the conversation this morning is going to bother on what has been happening between Parliament and the Presidency two of the three arms of government that we have in this country. Some say that this is, this is good for our democracy because then it, it brings out the strength and the flex of power of the, the, the two arms of government. But others say that this, this is toxic for our democracy because we cannot continue on, on this path. And at what point does all of this end? so that there, there can be some level of compromise and, and agreement on what has to be done going forward. But in the end, it is you and I, the Ghanaian people, who are either going to be beneficiaries or victims of, of all of what has been happening over the last few days gone by. Remember, we are very interactive. You can also share your thoughts and, and views with us as we go on here on TV3 Ghana on, on Facebook. And my guests already seated and those joining us virtually, some of them will be joining us along the way as we go. Uh, the Honorable Nelson Roxen Eche Dafiamekbo is Member of Parliament for the South Dai constituency. He is the plaintiff in this case that the Speaker of Parliament referred to. The reason why he couldn't proceed with the approval of these uh, ministerial nominees. And then also he is um, one of the sponsors of this anti-LGBTQ plus bill. He's a private legal practitioner as well. Nelson Roxen, I said, good morning. Welcome. Good morning, my brother. And uh, good morning to senior. Good morning. Uh, morning. Cool. It's, uh, you could have been last week. Yes, yes, yes. I had to be in the constituency because of some rainstorm. Hey, again. That damaged some of my mm. my constituents' homes in Chame, Blango, wow. mm. Wudome, mm. and Germany. Mm. Over 120 homes. Hey. Uh, Another rainstorm. As a yes, thing. It was a rainstorm. So we are appealing wow. for roofing sheets to be able to assist our people. So okay. good morning to my constituents in Pekik, Bali, Brevet, Tongo. Especially to the victims of the rainstorm. The rainstorm. Mm. Yeah. Do we hear from me soon? Yeah, indeed. Yes, well, and, and we would all. And I wish them all the best for the Easter. Easter is next week. Indeed. Yeah. Yes. We'll yes. all chip in, mm -hmm. you know, yes, 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 yes. every step of the way yes, and yes, uh, yes, yes. see how we can also complement the efforts that you yes. are putting together. Yes. Also, joining us is a private legal practitioner and uh, the leader of the one of three individual bondholder groups. He has not been on this show for the past two weeks or so. Yes, and a number of you have been also asking questions. Martin Pebble yeah. is here with us. Yes. Also, good morning. Morning, Mr. Kansi. Morning. Welcome. It's good to be back. Thanks. Thanks. Well, where have you been? I had to travel a bit, you know, sometimes. Uh, it's good to get out of here and um, push other things. Yes, we for doors, so I don't need you So I have to see to the other commitments. Yes, we for doors, so I don't need you now. Don't need you now. Don't need you now. Exactly. <laughs> when your farm is many, yeah, you have to attend to all. Many. Uh -huh. You have to attend to all. Attend to all. <laughs> Let me also uh, thank you. Thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. okay. One of the senior members of parliament that we have in this country. Um, one who is also a private legal practitioner for that matter, served in a number of ministerial portfolios that we have in this country, has contributed his due to the democracy and development, not only of parliament, but of this country in its entirety. I'm talking about the Honorable Samuel Atachia. He is also joining us on Zoom. Honorable Samuel Atachia, can you hear me? Good morning. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? 
Come. Hello? Uh, okay. Hello. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay. Um, th there's a little break in the connection, but we'll, we'll work at it as we go on. He's a Boko South member of parliament. Hello? Yes. We, 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 I, I can hear you. There's a little break in the connection, but I can hear you. So we'll rectify as we go on. Th thank you. Thank you very okay. much. For, yes, thank you for joining us. Dennis Miracles Abwaji, who is the spokesperson for Dr. <coughs> Mahmoud Bamiya's campaign team, uh, presidential staffer, is going to be joining us as well in a minute um, to have a conversation on this matter. Uh, it's also been a while that he's been on this show. And so welcome. I'll have a number of other lawyers also joining us as we go on here on the key point. But all of this started this week with a letter from the presidency to parliament that they should not even transmit this anti-LGBTQ plus bill to, to the presidency. Then the Speaker of Parliament had cause to read this statement, the details of it, essentially saying, well, in that same spirit, I will not go ahead with the approval of these ministerial nominees. I want to take a look at what the Speaker said specifically, that, that let the, the statement that he read in Parliament earlier to, uh, this week. Take a look. Rejection of a bill's transmission without constitutional basis introduces a precarious deviation from established democratic practices and norms. Such actions, if left unchallenged, may embolden future attempts to circumvent the legislative process, thereby weakening the integrity and efficacy of our democratic institutions. The current impasse presents an opportunity for reflection and reaffirmation of our commitment to the principle of democracy, rule of law, and the unequivocal respect for the legislative process that forms the bedrock of our nation's governance. Well, so that is the Speaker of Parliament there. And uh, as we go on, I'll show you um, some quick text of s some of the things that, you know, he captured in this statement, which has been described as, as worrying for some. Others believe that it is good for our democracy. Samuel Atacha is gone off, but we'll try to reconnect with him shortly. Dennis Miracles Abaji is, is joining us uh, as well in the studio. Dennis, good morning. Welcome. Good morning, Alfred. Good it's, to see you. It's been a while you have been here. Yes, and you have been doing a lot of things. A lot of different things that we'll talk about later. I see. I'm sure you know. You... Don't wait for further comment. I said we'll talk about it later. <laughs> Certainly. Exactly. <laughs> uh, anyway, we'll also have a number of people joining us on, on, on Zoom as we go on. But... Uh, I'll start off with you on this matter, and this is an issue that you know, we've, been, we've been following and we indeed having conversations since the, mm -hmm. the week began. Mm -hmm. Some say that this flex of muscles between the, the presidency and the and parliament is good for our democracy. We, others say that, look, this, this is toxic. It, it cannot continue this way because we need to know at what point it has to end. Mm. so that if these two arms of government have to be playing complementary roles, but now we are seeing how things are playing out, we, we should all be concerned. What's your take on this? I, I, have, I tell you that I'm largely in favor of the current situation because, you know, it's helped to test the boundaries of the mm -hmm. executive power, mm -hmm. and it's shaping our democracy well. You know, and it's shaping our democracy well. Absolutely. So when people say it's toxic, I'm like, hey, 
I am usually non-confrontational, but from time to time, you need a bit of confrontation. Because when you have a president that hardly listens to the populace and uh, elected representatives, not too long ago, even the whole of the majority caucus asked him to sack his brother. But because they were making money, he refused to sack him as finance minister, etc. You know, so many examples. You need things like this to put him in check. You know, especially also in the context of a president who last year made it very clear that he's tired, he's bereft of ideas, he can't handle the economy anymore, and says he's waiting for the next leader, but would not leave as required by Article 60, Clause 13, that if he and the vice president resign today, within three months, there will be an election, right? So this particular incident is good riddance. It's helped us to show him a bit that, look, it's not as if all the powers in Article 58, he can just, you know, um, walk rough short over parliament mm -hmm. and everybody in Ghana. So this is really, really good. So when I see people say this is toxic, I'm like, ah, do they live in Ghana? Or these are diehard MPP people masquerading in other, you know, uh, uh, venues and faces. Because anybody who has lived there and seen how President Kufado has ridden us rough short should be very excited. Excited about this? Yes, that there's been a check. Because from time to time, it's good to check him. And uh, Speaker Babin has done absolutely marvelous. And of course, we should be thanking uh, Roxanne Nelson Dafemoko for initiating the process. Yeah, Kufado has to be checked. Just things because, oh, Article 58 says that the executive power is in the president, etc. But you need the cooperation of other uh, arms of government. So they'll tell you all the cases under separation of power. They'll tell you that, yes, there's separation of power, but there's also cooperation and interdependence, etc. Mm -hmm. You hear the famous Youngstown Township case, mm -hmm. yeah, in constitutional law. Mm -hmm. And we also have to four yes. versus Attorney mm -hmm. General. Yeah, yeah, Justice uh, Blackburn and the rest. They'll tell you, yes. You went to uh, town. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's. Let, let, so let's come back to say so. So, so, so does this not hurt the cooperation that, that we're talking about, that, that these arms of government have to have? Mm -hmm. No, so it must, there must first be the conflict, and then, so that's what's going to hit the president and make him see that, oh, he's gone overboard, so he needs to, you know, reach out to the speaker, then they see what they can do, mm -hmm. okay? Yes, not, because naturally, you keep, you remember Speaker Bagbin, even under the previous administration, he okay. said he used to advise JM in pri private, JM wouldn't listen. Then he came out public and said he would advise JM on radio. So if everybody's been talking to Ekufuado, Ekufuado would not listen as president, ah, this is the next step. So you just take it and so, but let's get this point. To be very clear, let's not make it look like it's just a tit for tat, no. Yes, I was one of the first persons to start saying tit for tat. Yes. But I made the point that mm -hmm. that is on the face of it. You see, there are various levels of analysis. Mm -hmm. On the face of it, you may think it's just a tit for tat. But when you go deeper, you find that both the president and the speaker of parliament are talking law. Yes, they are talking mm -hmm. law, which is that straight away. When the matter is in court, don't do anything that renders the case nugatory. In simple terms, don't do anything that will make the case a foolish case. Don't. Those are, are laws of contempt. And look, as recent as June 2018, in the case involving the Bank of Ghana governor, mm -hmm. Addison, the Bank of Ghana, uh, Caroline Otu, the secretary, Yahweh Fifa, etc. Mm -hmm. in, in the court, in the process of the Supreme Court affirming the Court of Appeal decision, that committed them for contempt or loosely, let's, let's say, convicted them. Though technically, they will be told that when it's contempt, don't say conviction, maybe mm -hmm. committed. But mm -hmm. so if uh, in the process of using committed, I say convict, please just uh, forgive. You know, sometimes uh, in a hurry, we yes. make those small, small mistakes. Yeah. The Supreme Court reiterated the principle that mm -hmm. it is still good law that when the matter is in court, whether there is an application for injunction or not, or whether there is an order, express order of injunction or not, stay your hands. Don't do anything that makes the case a foolish case. So in this case, the president 
is right and he has my support, 130 percent. Mm -hmm. When he says he's not signing the anti-gay bill because mm -hmm. it is pending, the case is pending in the Supreme Court. You, you support Wait. the president's stand on yes. that? Yes. And so for me, you know, for a long time now, I mean, since I saw that his, uh, his governance is bad, I stopped supporting him, though I voted for him to come. So for me today to support the president, then you know that he really must be right. It's not 50-50. I'm very clear in my mind. That, uh, that if, if there is a case pending in court, <coughs> yes. the one in June 2023 and the Rich Sky one, mm -hmm. in your view, contrary to what the minority and others think, the president should not sign the anti-gay bill because these matters are, these cases are, are in court? <clears throat> Absolutely. 130%. You ask me a thousand times, I will come back resoundingly in favor of the president, not sign it. Look, if we are in a hurry, like you know how the president said he was in a hurry in the first term and then ended up throwing us into this deep crater. If we are in a hurry, honorable that film is here, you know what to do. Ask for an expeditious trial. Yes, yes, we call abridgment of time and all those things. Explore that. Talk to the Supreme Court. This is a matter because, you see, I've seen how various um, stakeholders in the country are coming and baying for the blood of the president, saying he should sign, he should sign. Please. You know, I've seen even my own church, the Catholic Church is not happy, etc. But, you know, we live in a country of laws. Yes, we know in the past the president hasn't, you know, his conduct hasn't been the best, okay? It's about... The, the worst performing president in recent times, right? But that notwithstanding, he says this time he wants to live within the law. And living within the law says that he should not sign until the Supreme Court is done. Yes, let's, let's give him that because we are building a democracy. Otherwise, we are saying that because while the E-Levy suit was pending, mm -hmm. uh, he went ahead and signed and all those things. So because of that, it follows that he must sign this one too. Then it means that we're saying we should not improve our governance. That's the argument. He did things that were very unpalatable yesterday. And today we are asking him to do the same things. You know, then it means that we are not I progressing. See. Yes. Okay. So this is the Bank of Ghana case. As recent as 2018, as far as I'm aware, that's the most recent on this matter. The court is very clear, and it didn't start with this Bank of Ghana case. Listen, mm -hmm. in our history, I'm sure you've heard of Kwame Nkrumah's uh, minister, Krobo Duse. Krobo Duse yes. was com uh, committed for contempt for this same kind of thing, that a matter was pending. They went to parliament to pass a law to, that's Balugun and Duse, they mm -hmm. deported Balugun, mm -hmm. those things. Robert Dusse was committed. He was yes. minister for interior. He was oh, minister right. for interior. Yeah. Then uh, you come to Second Republic. When you talk about Dankwa Buzia Dombo, okay. Dombo was a minister for interior in Buzia's government. He to the same thing, deportations. I think it had to do with the Olympios yeah. or something. Yeah. The same thing, the matter of spending, they deported Olympios. So the, the, Olympio. uh -huh. Then Dombo also so, uh, committed for contempt. So it's always been good law that, listen, when the case is in court, whether there is an application for injunction or not, or whether an order of injunction has been made or not, there still remains a principle that don't eviscerate the case, the core of the case. Don't do something that renders the case uh, this is negatory, useless. No. I've heard things, you see, but let's quickly add this last point. What we have is that it's also true that when it comes to statutory duties, mm -hmm. government, you know, work and the rest, the fact that the courts have not been granting injunctions lightly doesn't mean there is a principle that a public officer can never be injuncted. Right. Please, let's get that very clear. I've mm -hmm. seen some analysis. Look, there mm -hmm. can be a thousand cases. Right. So can say, let's repeat this. That all those applications, when you seek to mm -hmm. injunct a public officer, all of them have been dismissed. It does, it is, the fact that those have been dismissed doesn't result in a rule of law that once a public officer is going to engage in his activities, if you go for an injunction, the, what would you call it, the injunction, because it will fail, there's a principle that for public officers, they are free to do anything. Then that would be a lawless country. Mm -hmm. That would be a lawless one. That's why I said that. Then what we should be looking at is that in situations like this, ask for 
an abridgment of time. When we say abridgment, cut short the time. So if the thing is going to be done uh, in, uh, let's say, two weeks' time, you can go to court, apply to the court, show reasons why sh the motion should be heard tomorrow or the next day. Okay. Then once the way is clear, that will be great. Because I've looked at other democracies. You've seen it how in the advanced countries, they stop the public uh, functions, mm -hmm. public statutory duties. They stop them and go into the case and finish before anybody decides to do anything. A few okay. years ago, didn't you see Brexit? Mm -hmm. A few years ago, didn't you see If in Ghana here, let's look at one classical example. In the previous administration, Professor Kweku Asari, in one of the cases, when took this constitutional review yeah. matter to court, a lot of us were not happy because we wanted constitutional review, I mean, the constitutional review to be done quickly, right, so that we amend the constitution and get better governance. Yet he took the matter to court. What did JM do? There was no application for injunction. No order of injunction was granted. Yet, JM, and Co, just, JM was president, right? He stayed his hands for over two years. By the time the Supreme Court was done, time had run out. We did, so long story short, eventually we didn't get the um, constitutional review that we needed. And you know, since then, Ekufuado came, he promised you do something, so he didn't. We didn't get election of MMDCs and the rest. See how we lost. Yes, yet it was just one person who went to court. And the rest of us have lost so much. Yeah, that is rule of law. So today, to say that, oh, we should just ignore the Supreme Court uh, processes and ask the president to sign the anti-gay bill, it's not something I can support in good conscience, not with the law that I know. Well, and in the same measure, the speaker to, uh, would not uh, ask for the approval to continue until the Supreme Court is done with uh, Honorable Dafia McPherson's case. And let's add this. Look, I, I, I want to, no, hold on to that thought. Don't lose it. Cool. Respectfully, mm -hmm. um, because there are others who might hold contrary views based on the position that you've taken. But Honorable Samuel Atacha is joining us on the telephone now because our Zoom connection to him, because of where he is, um, there's, there's a, a little break in it. Um, good morning, Samuel Atacha. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello, good morning. Hello? Okay. We will, we will reconnect to him. I'm, I'm sorry. We'll connect to him. Lawyer, please. Mm -hmm. I hope you haven't lost your no, no, at all. thought. You, no, no, yes, no, no, no. Yeah. Yes. You, you, please yeah, conclude on that point. Oh, okay. Good. So, uh, uh, the, the point is that, as I mentioned, let's be very uh, mindful of this point. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how bogus the case looks. Okay. That's the very important tool. You can look at the case and see that mm, this one, it will fail. Yeah, very set in your mind, of course, but don't forget to sometimes, uh, they will tell you from experience, uh, the cases in court that you think you don't have a case, you'll be surprised that's the one you win. Then the one you think, oh, everything, this is open and shut, you win it 150%, you end up losing. But that aside, no matter how bogus the case looks like, what has been filed, our law is still that, please, don't ignore it. You go to court. No matter how bogus, bogus, it looks like this case will not fly. Because I've seen the Attorney General doing some analysis, saying that Honorable Dafia Mapo's case will not, uh, this doesn't restrain Parliament. His case is against the ministers who have, uh, those who have been reassigned, mm -hmm. and not against the approval process. So meaning that his request for the interlocutory injunction against the approval process in Parliament, etc., it's neither here nor there. Those analysis, please, that is not law. That is not law. What is law and which you can never get wrong is that once you've been saved, don't go and do anything. That will bring the administration of justice into disrepute. Let me read just a little bit from the Bank of Ghana case, mm -hmm. the one that uh, committed Governor Addison and Co. for contempt. They say that, the Supreme Court relying on the case of the Inri Efidiasi Stool Affairs, number two. That's Republic versus Numapau, <laughs> President of the National House of Chiefs and Others, ex party Amiyao, the second, <coughs> number two. <laughs> exactly, yes, he was quite a famous uh, and good guy. In holding one, the Supreme Court held 
pe aqua gsc so for a kufu hey yes and oh, god bless her you know <laughs> last year by this time she was leading the charges against the obnoxious policies of uh, DD. Uh, yes okay so for a kufu god bless her yes miracles the government was giving us haircuts very dangerous haircuts <laughs> <laughs> okay, it says contempt of court was constituted by any act or conduct that tended to bring the authority mm. and administration of the law into disrespect or disregard or to interfere with or prejudice parties, litigants, or their witnesses in respect of pending proceedings. And contempt of court might be classified either as direct, indirect, blah, blah. So you've heard it. So anything that tends to bring the authority and administration of the law into disrespect, sometimes we say disrepute or disregard, you say. So you go on and on and on. So the Supreme Court is saying this particular one is always hanging. And don't forget the contempt powers are very wide, eh? very wide. So mm -hmm. don't restrict it to application for injunction or an order for injunction. That has never been our law. Okay. It's never been restricted to just an express order or, an, a, 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 or a pending application, no. And also let's add, there's a Republic versus High Court, uh, 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 this, um, the, this case, we often call it ex parte Mofat, but it's not. It's ex parte Aluti, right? Mm -hmm. Republic versus uh, High Court, the Mofat case. Of course, lawyers mm -hmm. can uh, identify with it, but we should begin to call it by its uh, proper name, uh, ex parte Aluti. Yes, yes a, a few days ago, Samson Ladia mm -hmm. drew my attention mm -hmm. that, hey, Martin, what, shouldn't we be calling it its proper name? Yeah, Republic versus Mofat and others, ex parte Aluti, 1971, GLR. That's where they tell you that when once you have an application for injunction pending, please right. don't do anything. Don't do anything. If you do anything to stultify it, it's also contempt. So for me, once in both cases, the Sky case and Honorable Dafia Mekos case, there are applications pending. The speaker shouldn't do anything. And even as I've said, me, the pending applications are not my strongest point. My strongest point is that once the substantive rates were filed, the law is that don't do anything that would, you know, render the case a foolish case. So even without the applications for injunction, I would still have supported the, pres the president for his decision not to sign, and I would have supported the speaker. So the pending applications for injunctions, I guess, uh, what do, I'll call them a gloss. I'll I call see. them a gloss. Well, uh, uh, thank you for, for this. And uh, we'll try the... Uh, John also want to touch you in a bit as well to see if we'll get him back on the telephone um, as we go on here on Key Point on, on TV3. But Nelson Ross and Daphne Mopo, who is the plaintiff in this matter, is, is with us. You made reference to something the Attorney General said, the analysis he has done, which you, you say you have a different view on. Uh, we'll play that exclusive interview that my colleague Joseph Akable had with him two days ago on this matter. But this issue has both political, legal, social, financial angles, considering the president's comments, and then also the Speaker of Parliament on this matter. Miracles, what, what exactly is the difficulty, and I say difficulty with lack of better expression, in having the president sign this based on the statement that he has made in the past. Has his position changed on LGBTQ and matters in this country? Well, and I take this from the political <coughs> angle, because as I indicated, these, th well, this matter has different angles that we're going to explore this uh, morning. Uh, Alfred, um, good morning to you and good morning to my seniors, Honorable Roxin and Lawyer Martin. I think that one of the things that it's obviously paying out again in this conversation is the fact that Ghana, we always and at all times have to find a way <clears throat> to polarize and unnecessarily make very genuine issues extremely partisan and always find a way to 
uh, box people into spaces where they are not just to satisfy uh, our, our parochial political interests. The law has, has been passed. It's a law proposed by MPP members of parliament and NDC members of parliament. Is that correct? You mean the anti-LGBTQ plan? Is that correct? Yes. It was okay, approved two, unanimously by Not parliament. just approved. It's a private member's bill. The sponsors of the bill? Sponsored yes. by MPP members of parliament. And NPP and MP, NDC members NDC of parliament. MPs. Is yes, that correct? Indeed. I just want us to, you know. That's established. Number yes. two, the law, when it was presented in parliament, and all the work that was done at the committee level was done purely on consensus by both MPP members and NDC members. Is that also correct? That's true. Number three, the law and its passage on the floor of the House and all of its accompanying amendments have been done by both MPP members and NDC members. As a matter of fact, You've had several views in terms of amendments raised on the floor of the House. Um, recently, I was reading um, one about um, Honorable Sosu, Madina MP, NDC MP, who was saying that she, he was completely against jail term for, for citizens who are engaged in, 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 in um, LGBTQI. So, uh, you want me to stop? No, let, let me go on to the telephone. Before we lose Samuel Atacha again, okay. hold on to that thought. Okay. Don't lose it. Samuel Atacha is uh, joining us as a member of parliament for Boko South. He's a senior member of parliament for that matter in, in this country. And then also a private legal practitioner in good standing. Can you hear me, Council? Good morning. Hello? Hello? Uh, hello, can you hear me? Hello, 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 yes, okay, so we'll, 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 we'll try the line again and um, understand that there's some issues with the connection, we'll try it again. And uh, so essentially you, you, you make so the, the point law, about... The law yes, as has been passed, it's a law purely passed based on consensus, largely by everybody across the political divide. On the floor of the House, there was a complete consensus on the passage of the law. There are members of parliament who raised issues of amendments in the law, and these amendments were either carried or thrown away. But in principle, Nobody from the MPP or the NDC side has been against the passage of the law. That's a fact. And the law has been passed. I mean, approved by parliament. I mean, yes, approved by parliament. Then it has to be transmitted to the president for the president to assent to it or otherwise, or raise concerns. Don't forget, when it's transmitted to the president, it is not only assenting to the law. The president can also communicate back to parliament on areas of concern. Mm -hmm. A lawyer, I don't know yeah. if I'm right. Yeah, 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 yeah. On areas of concern. Yeah. So it's not as if the whole process ends yeah. at the point where parliament transmits to the president and the only thing left is for president to assent. The president under the law is mandated to look at it and then areas of concern he can write mm -hmm. to parliament and say that I've received the law but I think that you should look at A, B, C, D. And the parliament also under the same law can look at the concerns and the issues raised by, by the president and also go back to look at it and get back to the president. So it's a process. But unfortunately, this whole thing of us making it look like the process has ended and that the only thing left at this point is for the president to just sign is wrong, it's erroneous, it's completely misplaced, it's false. That doesn't end there. In between, a citizen of the Republic or citizens of the Republic who also have rights under the same law that other people have utilized to push a private member's bill says, I have concerns with the law that is about to be passed. And 
if this law is passed in the manner in which it is, because mm -hmm. I read it, and I can bet you about 80% of the people who are making commentary and saying all these things haven't read the law. <laughs> How do you know that? Oh, I, but I've spoken, say, I've spoken with people. You cannot say with certainty. I can tell you that people. some of the people that you interview, sometimes ask them if they've seen the, the, the law, ask them. I can tell you, ask them. Well, the, I am the, telling you. You, know, you, you, you say so, that. So, you know 80% that they of have, people that I've spoken to. That it, it's, no, no, it, Alfred, I'm it, telling it, you, 80% of people, people I've spoken, spoken to haven't read. Okay. And I can tell you that several people have not read the law. The law, as it says, in fact, had to even be refined before it's transmitted to the president. And I can tell you there are members of parliament who haven't seen the final document. It's a matter of fact. Because it will be the clerk who will now sit down pick all the conversations and amendments that have been approved and finalize, clean it up. It's a process. Clean it up before it's submitted. So even members of parliament may not have seen the final cleaned up law. And so they, may have, they might have heard or seen drafts, which some of the things may even have been removed in the process of, of, of the discussion. So the final document itself, a lot of people have been seen it. Then it goes to the president. When it goes well, that's to the why president, the president at the time he was speaking to the diplomatic community said the bill is yet to reach exactly. the table exactly. after the number of days of approval by parliament. Exactly. So I think that's exactly. the so, so in the process, somebody has taken it to court. Now the attorney general tells the president that, listen, there is a case pending in court on this matter. What it means is that you cannot go ahead and do anything about this matter until the case is determined. Then the president, through the secretary, decides to proactively write to parliament and say that, based on the knowledge of this case in court, I'm of the view that you should hold on to the processes before it gets to you. Because you see, there are specific timelines and tentatives and the process. If you transmit from parliament to me, I have a certain timeline to do certain things. Is that not the case? Yeah. I think it's a very simple matter. The president reserved the right under the law to write to parliament. Parliament reserves the right under the law to write to the president. I've seen letters from previous governments all the way from Rollins writing letters through the secretary of the president to the clerk of parliament. I've seen the clerk of parliament write letters to the president through the secretary. And so as I sit here right now, if um, Lawyer Martin Pebu and I are in a, a, a matter, and I am served, and I assumed that maybe Lawyer Martin Pebu may not have seen the, the, the notice. There's nothing wrong if I draw his attention to the notice that I am privy to, because Parliament may not have seen that notice. And so if the President said that I have seen this, and I think that based on that, I am requesting or I am asking that we halt the process until it is determined. I don't know why we are making so much um, fuss out of it. That's my view. Because you may not have seen that notice. And you could take an action that could, pre -judicial, could be prejudicial to the processes that are in, in, uh, going on in court. So it was a simple, proactive, under the law action by the president through the secretary. Then it gets to parliament. Then when it gets to parliament, you have a speaker of parliament who was out of town. He wasn't in town. He had traveled, had to rush back to parliament simply because of this. Comes to sit in the seat and say that, well, because you have written to me and asked me not to do something, I find it, uh, is it disrespectful? And so because of that, I am also not going to do something that needs to be done for the state to have a smooth run. And then the next day, he flies back out of the country to go and continue whatever he was doing there. It's fine. And the simplest description to it is that tit for tat. I want to show you where power lies. Well, the, because, you just because heard, it's not just about tit, tit, tit No, no, but that's, but I'm, I'm that's making an inference. Place, no, 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 I'm making an inference, the law. Actually. Don't forget, and I'll leave that one to Honorable Atachia and the, and the MPs. I won't go there. I won't pretend as if I understand the processes in parliament. But at least my little reading tells me that on the floor of the House, the Speaker doesn't determine what, you know, the decisions that Parliament makes. It is the members of Parliament who make that decision. So you could have left it to the members of Parliament to rise and discuss and say, because of this, we're also not going to pass. 
But the Speaker of Parliament on his own, on his own, gets up and says, I am not going to allow Parliament to run simply because I feel, I feel, I feel that um, there's an error somewhere. That is quite problematic. But I will leave that to, to, to the lawyers and the members of Parliament to determine. Now, let us also correct this falsehood and this misrepresentation. Um, the President of the Republic has been quite emphatic on his position on LGBTQI. He has said it everywhere, publicly. I do not support uh, uh, anybody engaging in gayism. I am not a gay. I love women. Honorable Raksil Dafia a hundred or a thousand. We love women. <laughs> I mean, I women you are, are beautiful. <laughs> you don't know you love women. We love women. Yeah, I didn't have <laughs> so, so, and, and Alfred, I want you to really allow me to exist. No, no, we love women. Polygamous or and, polygamous. And, and if you listen across the country, unanimously, there may be a view, but that's a minority view. There are few people who advocate for, for some of these things. Mm -hmm. But really, generally, our traditional system, I am from Latte, we have a Konedi, we have all, you know, fetishes across. They do not support gayism. Islam doesn't support gayism. I am a Christian. I am a devout Methodist. I do not support gayism. You understand? Mm -hmm. So nobody should ever create an impression. A politician and being devout. Nobody should, exp uh, should ever <laughs> create that impression no, 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 let's stay that yes. there is somebody at this point, either from the NDC or the MPP, that supports gayism. We do not. And that is why we have come together to pass the law. But people have issues with the law. Why don't you want to listen to them? The issues that the people have are the reasons why these people have gone to court. What is the rush? Why don't you allow these people to also have a fair hearing in this conversation where they say, listen, and I've read most of the writs from Richard Sky and all those who went earlier than Richard Sky. They are not against the passage of a law. They are against specific areas of the law. So why? I, Dennis, all of a sudden, I raise concerns about aspects of the law, and you, you, you want to tell me that I support gayism? Do you know how much women mean to me? Do you know how much I adore and appreciate women and the things that they bring to us as men? Honorable Dafia Mekko and I, as politicians, do you know the stress we go through from morning till evening, even midnight? You are sleeping at 1 a.m. and you are receiving phone calls from constituents. The only thing in this world that calms our nerves <laughs> and reduces our stress and ensures that all these things do not knock, out, knock us out of the face of this earth earlier than God has given us is, is women. Mm. Because ultimately, when you go home to your woman, that peace of mind that a woman gives you, I don't think Honorable Martin Pebu can give me. <laughs> and yeah, there is no way that I will have any interest <laughs> whatsoever in Honorable Martin Pebu. But Alfred, the medical people and the doctors tell us that through no fault of some people, and, and I'm choosing my words carefully. Mm -hmm. Through no fault of some people, they may have some biological and hormonal imbalances that sometimes knock them into this unfortunate, despicable, sinful act of a man having some emotional sentiment or sexual sentiment for another man. man. Then they come back to tell us that there is a cure. And then there is a way to cure these people medically so it can get them out of it. Now, think about this. If the doctors confirm this, and you, uh, 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 Alfred, unfortunately, you have a cousin of yours or a nephew of yours who finds himself in this hormonal imbalance situation and begins to show signs of having sexual connection with another man or a girl having for another girl at the age of 13 or 14, your single responsibility as a family member is to take him, help him, take him to a, 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 a facility and get a cure for him. But this is a social disorder and a medical disorder 
You know, there are two lines. Though. There are some people that are not medical disorder. Mm -hmm. In fact, right now in the world, there are some who are even trading it. There are some people who get into this simply because they think there's money in it. So we cannot assume that everybody is a victim. Don't forget also that there are perpetrators. People who are like that and who are luring our children and our family members into this. Please. Mm -hmm. So there are multifaceted approach in dealing with this situation. So if somebody says that you are passing a law that says anybody that is found in this should be jailed, and the person says, I have a problem with it, let the person speak. Because that person knows that he may find a family member or a friend in that situation that he could help that person and doesn't want that family member to be thrown into jail when he really genuinely could find a solution for that person. Why don't we want to allow anybody to have that conversation? Why? Why should we say that? Why should we say that if you make that point, I miracles, I make this point, then I'm gay? That's absolute nonsense. Well, I am not gay. It's, Wait, Alfred. That, no, no, I do not support it's, gayism. Let me, okay. let me, you let me land on this, then yes, you can ask right. me. I do not support gayism. I am not gay. I am not a supporter of anybody that promotes gayism. But I am against a situation where you think you can speak, but other people cannot speak. Those who are in court have the same rights as every other person that is making a point. Don't we have professors, renowned professors that we have held in very high esteem over the period, making comments about this? And then all of a sudden, the thing is in court. The president says that because the thing is in court, I have been advised by the attorney general that we should hold on. How does this make the president a, a supporter of, of, of gayism? Okay. So Why? Why are we doing this the, to ourselves? This matter of the custodial sentence that you made reference to, I recall that prior to Alexander Fenyamakin becoming the majority leader, this was one of 15 amendments that he sought to make to the status of the bill at the time. But he withdrew a number of those amendments eventually. The Honorable Nelson Alexander Fenyamakin, this custodial sentence matter that, that came up on the floor. Uh, specifically, how did this debate on that aspect of this end? I recall that was raised by Alexander Federman, is it not? Yes, yes, it is. This uh, three, three years, five years custodial sentence. Yes. How did it end? Now, uh, thank you. This bill has been in, uh, a product in the mail for the past three, four years. Now, after I went through consideration, consideration is the stage where we actually do the enactment, what we call the enactment, where we fix the law. A should be here, B should be here, T should be crossed, I should be doctored. When that is done, it is taken to the third reading and passed. But there's a provision in our law, in our standing orders, indeed. If I, if I may refer to our standing order 171, uh, 171, um, one, uh, with your permission for me read, second mm -hmm. consideration of bills. One, or the 171 rule one of our standing orders is to the effect that where a member intends to delete, amend, or introduce a provision in a bill which has been passed through the consideration stage, the member may immediately before a sponsor rises to move the motion for the third reading of the bill, move that the bill passes through a second consideration, either wholly or in respect of a particular part or parts of the bill or some proposed new clause or new scandal. So based on this provision, the Honorable Appeal Market proceeded to um, mm -hmm. I, I, uh, to bring back consideration, that's how we call it. I see. So you bring back consideration and we do what we call second consideration. And Speaker granted him the motion. Now when his motion was granted, then we proceeded to rule four of, of the 171, mm -hmm. which is to the effect that where a bill has been ordered to pass through a second consideration in respect of a particular part or pass of the bill, or some proposed new clause or new schedule, the House shall consider that relevant provision 
and any amendment which may be proposed to the bill. So the honorable majority leader, as, as he is now, was given opportunity to now bring forth all the amendments he intended to make at this level. And so an addendum, what we call an addendum, is that if you have an order paper such as this, and there are fresh matters, the table office will go and prepare those and, and on the other paper. Mm -hmm. So we can have other, other paper, then we have other paper addendum, other paper addendum, one addendum, two, depending on the exigencies of the matters. So he came back with about 15 proposed amendments, which was carried on the other paper addendum. Now, the nature of the amendments was such that uh, 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 Professor Josiah taught us that we shouldn't say something is the same in law. We say they are similar. Mm -hmm. So the nature of the amendment was such that they were similar. So once the first one failed, consequentially it affected the fate of the other 14. So it was given the opportunity to move the first amendment. It generated debate. He had like 15 minutes to defend it, which was very unusual. But when the question was put, the generality of the members, except himself, <laughs> voted against it. So speaker gave him a, a, a cue that uh, my majority did that, given the sense of the house, gauging the mood of the house, it appears that your amendment, the rest of your amendment may suffer a similar fate. Mm. So you may want to do the needful. Again, he made lots of missions. But he withdrew the, 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 the subsequent amendments voluntarily. He refused to use the word voluntary, though. But he withdrew them as a result of the, the, the mood of the house at the time. And I then, see. so, then we also came back at the, with the sponsors. We came back at the consideration seat, looked at some other um, sentencing regime and reduced them. And then we moved to the third reading and the bill was read for the third time and passed. So this is the history behind the, the, the sentence. You see, it's also because we, our defense was that if you say that the conduct that we are prescribing shouldn't come with custodial sentence when a person is convicted, the law, the law the, in our jurisprudence, we have what we call in our criminal jurisprudence, repeat offenders. Mm -hmm. The courts frown on repeat offenders. Recidivism. Yes, recidivism. The courts frown on that. So you once once you are just finding the person, the law ties the hands of the court to the extent that they cannot impose a custodial sentence. The person will be returning every other day with the same offense. And the courts will not countenance that. So we give them opportunity to impose a custodial sentence where we have repeated offender or recidivism you know so these are the principles behind that it's not as if we are saying that necessarily the person must be must be put into custody for for the conduct no that's that's not the point right so i just i just wanted that that clar at least that's how it ended the, yes if you conclude so, so, on your point so, so, so Alfred, in yes. all of these there are other citizens who believe that they cannot have a voice on the floor of the house you understand? Mm -hmm. Fairly, they wish they are there yeah. to also make their point. But they cannot have their voice. So the only place they can also go and sort of share contrary views to some of the points on the firm is making it's is the in court. the court. Yeah. I think we should allow them. Yeah. But okay. in doing this, what we should avoid is to try and let everybody who tries to help refine this law that we all agree to. I agree to it. Mm -hmm. I support it because, like I said, I do not want anybody close or far from me to be engaged in homosexuality. Okay. So I, I support it. But most importantly for me, it's a law that would block advocacy. It's a law that would prevent people who will be promoting this because I don't want my child to go to school and begin to be educated that even though you are male, you can decide to call yourself female. Or even though you are female, you can decide to call yourself male. Women and men, our relationship is from Adam. And Adam is believed to be the first man on earth across religions, if I may be wrong, but that is what it is. And we find solace in each other. Women find solace in us. Women, we find solace in, in, in women. 
And I don't think that in 2024, anybody would want to change that for their child or for their mother or for their father. But we need to tread cautiously as we pass the law so that we pass a law that's just as we've done in Parliament, consensus, everybody agrees to it. All politically divide, we all agree to it. Mm -hmm. Let's pass a law that everybody believes that this law would be beneficial to, to, to the entire citizenry. And that is why we don't have to necessarily rush and pretend as if today. For example, if the law is not passed today, it doesn't mean gayism is allowed. There's a law already in existence that abhors gayism, and that is against anybody engaging gayism today. Even though the anti lgbtqi <coughs> law hasn't been passed, mm -hmm. Today in Ghana, you cannot engage in, mm -hmm. in gayism. Except it's just a sex. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You understand? Even today mm -hmm. in Ghana, you cannot engage in, let's say, man to man or woman to woman uh, uh, sexual. That's the activity. unusual kind of knowledge. Exactly. You, so, it, so, the... so, to answer your question specifically, the MPP and the NDC they promoted this bill, and so we are in this together. The president hasn't said whether he is or he is not going to assent the bill because he hasn't gotten there yet. It is only when it's submitted to the president and it's received it that that question would even come in. What is happening now is that a citizen of the republic has gone to and stop the president and parliament from, from you know, uh, 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 passing the law. The point that Honorable Speaker of Parliament made in, in reference to Honorable Dafir Mepo's case, and he's here, maybe he can clarify, after the 20th of March, that Honorable, Right Honorable Speaker of Parliament made that pronouncement and flew back to, to Ghana. And by the way, it's paid by the people of this country. Flew ba back out of Ghana. That point okay. when, it's be, when it was being I'll, made, I'll Honorable Dafir Mekos case was actually not there in the courts. Well, that's another Because, that no, he, calm the, down. Yes, the calm plaintiff down. is here, so he will respond. No, but you have a set report from the court, so maybe mm -hmm. the courts are lying. No, no, it was. I am not lying. Don't, don't, don't calm worry. Down. Let, calm down. So he the he injunction, can he, 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 you, can, you, can file, you can file a case mm -hmm. in court, mm -hmm. but he, his application for the injunction uh, was done on 21st of March. But the Speaker of Parliament made reference to that, yes, that's that an when it didn't exist. Yes. You understand? It's, it's something that we need to put on, on record. Mm. That the Speaker of Parliament made reference to an injunction by Honorable Roxanne Dafia Mepo, which was not present at that time. It was the next day, apparently, probably, when the Speaker had actually committed that error, that maybe Honorable Roxanne, because Honorable Roxanne's application was received at the court at 11.05 a.m. on well, 21st of March. It's actually 10.05. As at 9 a.m., as at 9 a.m., the search report that I have seen yeah. that was made in the court, he mm -hmm. had not filed anything. Okay. And yet, a night before, mm -hmm. the Speaker of Parliament was making reference. So maybe they went for an NDC meeting. Well, well, but is it, is it, not, is it like not curious? Is, is, is it just one in 2020? There was a case already in 2020. Well, I mean... There was a case already in 2020. You make that reference. You'd also be reminded of what the President said. No, no, no. It's not When he met the diplomatic community as well. Alfred, you are wrong. So you are wrong. Let, let me bring you are wrong. There was a 2023 case. Well, you, you, the injunction had been thrown out. You are wrong. The injunction had been thrown out. No, the injunction was thrown out last week. Wait, it was thrown out last week. It had been thrown out. It had been thrown out last week. Last week. I'm telling you, no, no. It's wrong. You are wrong. Hold on. Hold on. It was thrown out last week. Hold on. It's here. Hold on. It's why you speak. No, but you listen. No, why we speak. Hold on. We listen to you, even though we disagreed. So allow. No, but you're not oh, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, gentlemen. Hold on. So ask him, ask him. No, no, let me, let me. I have that thing as a matter of fact. I invited, gentlemen, it is here. No, I invited Nelson Ross in the yes. oh, in at the point year. to clarify that issue of the custodial sentence. Now, let me also acknowledge the presence of, yes, yes, you are coming there. Acknowledge the presence of Justice Shemsai, his private legal practitioner, and then also a lecturer. A lawyer, Justice Shemsai, good morning. Welcome to Key Point. Good morning and good morning to my colleagues in the studio. Good morning to everyone. Um, I'm happy to join you this morning. Thank you for joining us. And uh, uh, come back to you, um, Nelson Ross and Daphne yeah, Amepo. The, uh, <laughs> yeah. the few things I want to clear up. Yes. The, when the clerk did the cleaning of the bill after you, you approved it, yes. does the cleaning affect the material? Or have any material effect on the content and nature and structure of the bill before it is transmitted to the presidency at all 
to answer you directly at all. The, if you say the, at all, what do you mean? The editorial work done by the clerk does not affect the content. Now, this is what happens. Let me reference you to our standing order 175, um, rules 1 to um, rules 9 on the matter. But importantly, the head note for order 175 is authentication and certification of bills. The background is that in the seventh parliament, uh, you know I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been a keen participant in in, in lawmaking. So I, I've come to appreciate this. During constitution, there are amendments that you move to generate debate, heated. Eventually, it will be passed. Now you can discover that when the law is eventually assented to, gazetted, and numbered. That particular amendment may not have been may not may not reflect in the law. You, you understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Or the entire amendment may not have reflected in the law. And mm -hmm. and if you if you look at our lawmaking process, it's it, it was a lacuna in the procedure that we detected. So in fashioning the new standing orders, we decided to introduce that as part, just like we know we we know we is when there are so many amendments to a legislation. Like the land, the land, the new land act is voluminous, and a lot of people are interested. So they bring a lot, a lot of, of amendments. amendments. When that happens, you can't do that on the floor. That, it takes forever. So a small committee of us, about about four, five, six, seven committed members, who sit at deep of night, mm. reconcile all these hundreds of amendments, mm. and agree. And and so it's called winnowing. Mm, yes. So we winnow, we winnowing the the amendment. Mm. We we save the chaff from the yeah. grain, <laughs> and bring the most material amendments back to the floor. When that happens, it goes through consideration easily. Mm. It, even though you may not feature in in the standard procedure that the laws go to, winnowing is such a critical part under under the stage we call consideration. Okay. So so is this. Authentication and certification of bills. <coughs> as soon as a bill is passed by parliament, the text of the bill as passed together with the explanatory memorandum shall be sent by the clerk to the government printer. <coughs> Two, the government printer shall print at least four copies of the bill on vellum paper or on a paper of enduring quality. And return the copies to the clerk. These are these are constitutional language. Three, the clerk shall, on receipt of the copies, ensure that the text compares correctly with the bill as passed. And if the clerk finds the copies to be correct, sign a statement on each copy as set out in the form one in the seventh schedule. And the authenticated copies shall be sent to the president for assent. All right. Now, so this this stage you do with the editorial, you cross T's and you I dot see. I's. That's fine. I just yes. wanted that yeah, because so of this, the point that Dennis yes. Miracles made that some of you have not even seen the final bill which was to be forwarded to Parliament because some changes would have been made. Yeah. Um, that you are not aware of. So I wanted to find out if the work of the, the clerk affects the content, the material aspect not. of the clerk, does not. The clerk okay. has no such power okay, to do great. that. Let's, I want now, to move to the next issue. Now the, now, the second point I want to make is, this is the original bill as we submitted to Parliament. Mm -hmm. uh, with the with the amendment, it contains um, 25 provisions on a 21-page document. This is not the same thing that has come out of Parliament. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's been baked. Yes, exactly. This is this is the the raw bread that went to exactly the, the point. What has so, come out is the baked material. Exactly. Now, the issue regarding this matter, and and I want to offer some education here. Dennis got it wrong because you see, in respect of private members' bill, which is not a government-sponsored bill. The procedure provided by the Constitution is different. The Constitution in Article 106, um, uh, where are you? 
uh, yeah, this is Article 106. 106 12 mm -hmm. is to this effect the provisions of clauses 7, to, seven 10. to 10 of this article shall not apply to a bill certified by the Speaker as a bill to which the provisions of Article 108 of this Constitution apply. And accordingly, the President shall give his assent to any such bill when presented for assent. What does Article 108 say then? It says that Parliament shall not, comma, unless the bill is introduced, introduced or the motion is introduced by or on behalf of command the president a proceed upon a bill including an amendment to a bill that in the opinion of the person presiding makes provision for any of the following now when a private member introduces a bill and the the member presiding which in this case is the speaker determines that this is not a bill that will occasion a charge on the consolidated fund and is taken through the processes of legislation and is passed the requirements under article 106 1 up to 7 is not applicable i am not saying it this is what the seven to ten or yes. seven to seven ten, to ten. Mm -hmm. it's not applicable this is what the constitution is saying now it therefore means that there's an imperative with a command on the president to receive the, the, the bill has passed for asset. That, for me, is the position. So, what is the issue? The issue is that the private member's bill, and, 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 and Dennis was happy on the fact that this is, this is a joint effort of MPP and DC. He wants to hear things. We are <laughs> eight. Only, only in team four Joe survived. And he survived, he, he survived on principle. By the NDC. There were, there were other sponsors. What, they, is, what is your point? You see, my point is that belatedly you want to take glory in the, in the <laughs> Success house. has many yes. parents. <laughs> but but I'll, 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 I'll leave that for you. I'll, 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 yes, I'll, I'll leave that for you. So, I am saying that the president, we all look at the law. The bill as it is, technically speaking, legally speaking, it's not yet an act of parliament mm. for anybody to say that I am questioning the constitutionality or legality of an act of parliament, properly so called, that is assented to, gazetted, and numbered properly by, by, by the clerk to parliament. And, 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 and it's been rolled into implementation. That is only when we can go and question the constitutionality. But as it is, we are sponsored. Do you know we can go and withdraw it? Mm -hmm. We can go and move a motion and we do it. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it, it remains a mere intention. But I won't sit here and make my legal arguments okay. because there's a forum convenience for that. But your question that you're asking is the confrontation between the, the executive and, and, the legislature. and the legislature for that matter. What has occasioned that? What has occasioned that is the fact that language arrogance, incompetence, is what has occasioned this. Why? The president says that I will not even receive a constitutional function that is, that is mandated upon parliament. I will, not, I will not recognize it. Submission of a bill passed to his office is part of the functions of parliament. Now, there may be, there may be a suit pending in respect of this matter but the receipt the receipt of the bill in my humble view cannot be contumacious of the powers of the court hmm. to make a determination of the case on its merits how how does that prejudice the outcome of the case unless we are saying that parliament is stopped from performing its functions and yet we have a lot of authorities by the same Supreme Court that says that you can't do that. And let me seek your leave and refer to this, this very formidable case. In Amidu versus Kufo, the, the court, the Supreme Court, 
had opportunity to say this. And this was the opinion wrought by Justice Beggar. Mm -hmm. It says, our constitution, like the American constitution, is a written constitution underpinned by the doctrine of the separation of powers. And it is important to say that being a written constitution, it has, like the American constitution, certain fundamental or basic attributes. The first is that the people of Ghana voluntarily, in the words of the preamble, do hereby adopt, enact, and give to ourselves this constitution. And under the constitution, the people of Ghana have exercised their natural and inalienable rights right. to establish a framework of government. The second attribute is that the form of government envisages three important branches or arms of government. That is the executive, legislature, and judiciary. The third attribute is that these various departments of government have their respective powers laid down with limits not to be infringed or transgressed by any arm of government. But these limits expressed in a written constitution will be meaningless and serve no purpose if freely ignored or infringed by the organs intended to be restrained. Although power is dispersed among the various organs of government, it should not be at the expense of harmony and governance. And I stress this. There is inherent or internal evidence in our constitution that the policy which informs or should inform an act okay. and the desirability of enacting such a law are matters for the executive and legislature to decide. But the interpretation of the law, its enforcement, and matters relating to the validity of the law enacted by parliament fall within the judicial functions of the courts. So that when we decide the validity of an act of parliament, we are not descending to the well of parliament and thereby interfering with its work. We are empowered by the constitution to declare if parliament transgresses the constitutional limitation placed on its legislative powers. These are the clear provisions of the holding of this, of this decision. Now, into four versus the Republic, all right? The Attorney General. Attorney General. The courts, again, the Supreme Court is very clear that where the Constitution says Parliament has the power to do certain things, mm -hmm. the Constitution has not been able to provide the formula for doing so. Okay. So when the Constitution in Article 110 is giving power to enact regulations to govern its own procedure, how it does it, it's, it's a matter of closed book. So, for instance, you cannot say that you want to question how the member presiding exercises that opinion in declaring that a bill will not occasion a charge on the consolidated. But the, 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 funda the, the fundamental that. issue that has been raised by the person presiding's position yes. is that that aspect of the statement he read, which borders on your suit, on the no, no, interlocutory no, no, injunction. No, no, I'm, 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 I, I want us to move and progress with this conversation okay. because of time. Now, we have aspect of the speaker's statement I'm going to put on the screen shortly. He indicates that, quote, be that as it may, honorable members, I also bring to your attention the receipt of a process from the courts titled Roxy Nelson H. Dafia Mekwa versus the Speaker of Parliament and the Attorney General, suit number J112-2024 which process was served on the 19th of March, 2024, and an injunction motion on notice, on notice, seeking to restrain the speaker from proceeding with the vetting and approval of the names of the persons submitted by His Excellency the President until the provisions of the Constitution are satisfied. Until the provisions of the Constitution are satisfied. In the light of this, the House is unable to continue to consider the nominations of His Excellency the President in the spirit of upholding the rule of law until after the determination of the application for interlocutory injunction by you. Yeah. You are the plaintiff in this case. Yeah. After this statement by the, the Speaker, the Attorney General and Minister of Justice, Godfrey Ewa Adame, had cause to go and conduct a search yes. at the court registry to establish whether indeed there was a 
an application of interlocutory injunction by you. And he indicates in the statement that he issued that as of 9 a.m. the next day, which was the, the Wednesday, there was no record of any, in, Thursday. in Thursday for them, there was no record of any interlocutory injunction application by yourself. Then we got a copy of your suit. Now, take a look at this. We established that based on the face, the face of the document that we received, mm. your suit was filed at 10.15 a.m., mm. the same day that the attorney general conducted the search at 9 o'clock. Mm. Now, thus, that legitimize the position of the likes of the AG and what Dennis Miracles about has said today, mm. that as of the, the night before or the evening before, mm. that was Wednesday evening, the speaker was making this statement, mm. there was no application of interlocutory injunction by yourself. Okay. Now, let me legally address this. Matter. And, and we, 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 let, let, let's put that yes. part of that. Let, uh, can you, can we, you we, 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 do you we, have we, copies of my motion yes. and... We, we, the Attorney General may have filed his search around 9, 9.15, if you check the date. The search was, was answered around 9, 9.45. People are not looking at the second page where you have the registry certification. Mm -hmm. The search was entered, answered by the registry around 9.45. Anybody who knows how court registry works, we got to the court. Look, I want to believe we got to the court. We went to the court on the Wednesday to file my application. If you want to hear the things that happened, I don't think you'll be interested. As we are of coming. <laughs> why? I went to the court. Okay, no, you were not there. No, say no, 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 no. So if, 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 if you want to hear the things that will happen on Wednesday, that's very, very important. The Wednesday, yeah. you don't want to hear them. No, please go ahead. That's Today, the to the extent important. that when you file a motion, mm. somebody, another officer must issue a hearing notice attached to it. You are aware? Yes. You want to hear why that was not done? Why was it not done? So, so please, the most important thing is that the Attorney General is making a foot soldier argument about the process. Oh, how? And yes, and it's very sad. How? And it's very sad that the Attorney General and the Minister of Justice of the Republic of Ghana will be making such arguments. But address the matter. Yes, I'm addressing the matter. That before the, 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 oh, that's can the, the, the that, that, oh, okay. Exactly, oh, but I'm saying that the Attorney oh, General oh, oh, has decided oh, to leave his law. No, I'm saying that before. And make political that and night soldier act. Oh, okay, okay. So, okay. So, so, so this is, please. Point. Had you filed? Please. Gentlemen, hold on, hold on. Please, can you, can you, do you know when I filed my writ? No, no, no. I'm asking you, just answer. Do you know when I filed my writ? educators, had you filed? I'm saying, I am saying that notice of you, do you know what? Do you listen? Listen, don't you, you are daring so, me. So, wait, no, 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 it's, it's a matter of you are daring me, no, and I'm that saying that go ahead. there's no way. I'm daring you, go ahead. I'm a professional. I'm daring you, go ahead. Dennis, Dennis, you, go ahead. Dennis, you Dennis, when you were talking, hold hold I was quiet. Hold on, hold on. So, you interrupted as I didn't interrupt, I was invited. Hold on, so you conduct yourself. It's okay, conduct yourself. Yes, let me just establish that this is what we were talking about earlier, as seen in the on the screen. So, where it's circled is 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 that is a time of your application and that's what you're explaining yes that um the top circle is the 10 15 yes that you filed on the 21st yes of, of this month yes right and i'm saying and, yes first of all fundamentally when you get to a court registry the registrar can decide to prioritize some other forces over yours okay. they do it all the time so anybody who want to deliver the point that a sex Right. A search that was filed at 9.15 and answered at 9.45 or right. 42 a.m. Mm -hmm. And another process that was filed 15 minutes or 30 minutes later were not contemporaneous, then the person doesn't know how, how they okay. have can please know, have oh, a notice oh, a day before. And, and, I'm, and, I'm, okay. and I'm telling you that okay. when a process comes, it comes together. Okay. <laughs> so, 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 uh, miracles, Abwaji, you can do all the politics, oh, but let me answer you legally. Yes. The Attorney General couldn't have written the kind of things he wrote if he was thinking legally. Okay, why do you he say He was so? not thinking legally, why? he was thinking politics. Why? He told that the filing of a writ meant nothing in, in, in the circumstances of this case. The Attorney General is saying that mm -hmm. where I am making an allegation that a constitutional breach has occurred 
in respect of the appointments of nominees of the president for purposes of Article 78 and 79 executive positions. And I'm saying that in one communication to parliament, you have communicated to parliament that you have nominated certain persons for purposes of parliamentary pre approval for appointment as ministers of state. In the same communication, you are notifying parliament that you have reassigned certain ministers that you have dismissed prior. And I'm saying that it's the same exercise, the same function, it's the same action. So you couldn't have been asking parliament to acquiesce his right of checking the breach of the constitution. When parliament does that, it's an omission. Okay. And parliament cannot be cannot be cannot be condoning a breach of the constitution. That's my allegation. Then the attorney general says that my my relief in respect of an in, injuncting the vetting process of those nominees is not related to the persons that are making allegations that they should come for prior approval. How does that make some sound, sound logic <laughs> and legal reasoning? <laughs> one action, one communication to parliament, a number of persons nominated are being brought to parliament for uh, uh, vetting and for purposes of prior approval process. Then you added that some six persons and um, my allegation is that you have dismissed those people. So there's no way they were, they were occupying a ministerial portfolio for which you can shift them. So mm -hmm. you know, if, I, if, I want, if I want to deal with that matter, I must deal with the matter holistically, well, not in peace the, the, the manner. says you misinformed the Speaker of Parliament. Why? Am I the court belief? It's part of the problems I have with the reasoning of the Attorney General. Am I the one who misinformed, who, 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 served, who, served, who served the speaker or served parliament in this matter? Why is the AG making political arguments in legal issues? What is, what is the AG's interpretation of a writ properly filed invoking the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court? Is that the interpretation the AG is, 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 is edging on us? It's a very sad day for the office of the AG in this country. That an attorney general of his standing can do this because of politics. He doesn't see the connection between the exercise parliament is engaging and my, and, my, and, my, and my action in court. He doesn't see the linkage, the direct linkage, and how the two are inextricably woven together. Well, I think, no, I think every lawyer worth his thoughts understands what's happening, except the attorney general. And of course, he wants to do that because he's living his law and he's talking politics. I want to play what exactly the Attorney General said in that interview with my colleague, Joseph Akable. Just take a look at that, an aspect of that interview. And I would ask you a question about whether just in his words, a mere reference of an intention to apply for intellectual injunction amounts to an intellectual injunction in itself. Take a look at this. In, indeed, if I were those affected, I think that we even have a cause of action against 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 Parliament, against the, the persons who are who are contending so. Because if I have been, if I were not a minister and had been nominated for ministerial appointment, what how justified is it for a person to restrain Parliament from considering? my approval simply because he has a case against some other persons who, who, who are not in parliament. I mean, I think that wholly unrelated. And I think this country must be very analytical in the way we, we think and do things. And we must also stop unnecessary politicking. And when that is done, I think the nation will develop. I mean, finally, as Attorney General, um, there are those who make the point that the issues that have been raised have been settled in judgments of as Attorney General. Uh, do you share that view or you still think that there's a matter that perhaps uh, has been presented differently? Maybe the court may take a different view. I hold the view that there's no genuine issue for constitutional interpretation whatsoever. There's no genuine case for constitutional interpretation whatsoever. Apart from the fact that some of the issues, I mean, whole partly has been determined in, um, the issue partly has been determined in J.H. Mr. Atenjura. There's actually no case at all for constitutional interpretation. If at all, it's actually a case for, 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 for um, um, semantics or grammatical interpretation. And that is not the threshold for a constitutional action. If the president revokes a minister's appointment and reassigns that minister to another ministry. 
if you do not understand it correctly, and you think that that implies in English language that it means a cessation of the minister's appointment by the president, the president does not have the right to then reappoint, so be it. It raises no issue for constitutional interpretation whatsoever. That's the Attorney General responding to aspects of this, of this suit that you have filed. And he indicates in that statement the issue that you, the plaintiff, you have not filed as of the time an application for interlocutory injunction seeking to restrain the speaker from going ahead with the approval of the names of the persons submitted by His Excellency the President. Thus, there is nothing before the Supreme Court as of the time which may constitute a restraint or fetter on Parliament from proceeding with the approval of these ministerial nominees. Um, it, as made reference to in accordance with Article 78.1 and 79.1 of the Constitution, that every application for interlocutory injunction or relief in any of the Supreme Courts, as a tried, must be by a motion, specifically filed and prayed for desired relief. The mere statement on a writ of summons of a prayer for interlocutory injunction relief is inconsequential and of no effect. <laughs> okay. That is the verdict of the Attorney General. Yes, uh, and I'm happy that is the opinion of the Attorney General, and it enters his door. You but, just, but, you but, 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 as part of my main reliefs, I am seeking for an interlocutory or an interim injunction against Speaker from proceeding was enough. Yes, and that's absolutely. the law. That is the law. That, that is the law that, again? that is the law that Martin quoted yes. heavily and relied yeah. on. So I didn't want to bore you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the Attorney General can sit in his yeah. chambers and do his politics. And that's why I'm also he, not happy now, with that. Today, the Attorney General says that mm, those ministers yeah. have a cause of action against me. Indeed. I welcome it. They should, they should go to court. The Attorney General is refusing to see the unconstitutional conduct of the President. What is the unconstitutional conduct? The unconstitutional conduct, of the conduct is that on a very fine morning on 14 February, the President told the whole country, the whole world, that he has dismissed some number of ministers. That's the end of the story. Mm -hmm. He has power, however, to make fresh appointments, which he has done. But he hasn't got the power to dismiss people and seek to reassign them. Mm. I am saying that you can't use language like that. When you want to appoint, say you are, you are making fresh appointments, which are subject to pro-parliamentary approval. He wants to use language to avoid the constitutional strictures in pro-parliamentary approval. That is my point. I will not allow it. And parliament too will not condone such unconstitutionality. And he sees and, 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 and he's messing his law up. Today, the Attorney General of the Republic of Ghana says that a writ, properly, pro properly so called, properly invoking the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court with an injunctive relief as part of the main relief means nothing. Well, uh, uh, counsel. Uh, I, 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 no, 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 I know, no. just two seconds, just to provide some information. Quickly. I think that, I mean, I, mm -hmm. I, Honorable Dafeo is a principal actor in this case. So we'll leave that to him. But most importantly, that fundamental question, that fact, is important that it's not twisted. When you listen to the speaker, you played his voice. The speaker was quite um, categorical. At some point, he said that until after the determination of the application for interlocutory injunction by the Supreme Court, and this was made on the 20th um, of March, 2024. What this is saying is that the speaker is saying, as at the time he was speaking that evening, he had received or seen an application, or he has been served of an application for interlocutory injunction by the Supreme Court. We are saying that that is false, and that the application for the interlocutory injunction by Honorable Roxin Dafiamapo was made on 21st March. Dafiamapo, okay. in this case, might not have committed any crime. The real person who has questions to answer is the speaker. And if there's anybody right. playing politics, it is the speaker who is playing politics for making reference 
to something that he had not seen or something that was going to happen oh, in the future. Okay, thank you. That so, is so, a fact. So there, there, there was a point that there was a specific reference that Lawyer Martin Pebble made speaker, in speaker responding to this. Yes. Okay. The first English word speaker used was that he or phrase is that he, he has received a court process. Yes. In official capacities, you are always informed. The information may not be entirely, <laughs> entirely accurate, but he has received information that a court process has been set. I'm not an on application for interlocutory injunction. Yeah, ah, I think we should be but, fair. But I'm saying, but I'm saying, you're okay, 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 you, president. You, you, eh? the okay, president. You are struggling no, no, too much. No, no, I am not struggling. So, 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 I am not struggling. You were doing politics with the speaker. No, no, is anybody doing politics? Okay, the speaker. I'm not struggling. He's the one who traveled. Hold on. I have to tell you. Why you speak? Why you? I was the one speaking that you interrupted. Hold on. 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 That the lawyer Martin Pebble made in, in, a, in, the, in the provision that I want it reiterated because mm. of this issue of the timing and whether or not the, the mayor statement as captured in, in there or supports the relief of interlocutory injunction in any of the Supreme Court for that matter as captured in the Attorney General statement that indeed every application people for interlocutory relief in any of the Supreme Courts, as it tried, must be by a motion specifically filed and praying for desired relief. Does that statement on a writ of summons of Nelson Dafia Mekbo, of a prayer for interlocutory relief, have any consequential effect? Absolutely. It does? Yes. You see? Um, let, let's put it this way. Just uh, let's get this first point from the to lay the basis for it in the uh, Bank of Ghana case, the one that uh, committed Governor Addison and the bank. Listen, you say the Supreme Court says this. Uh, the ju judicial power, and the Supreme Court is saying it's also using Article 125, Clause 3. The judicial power of Ghana by Article 125, Clause 3 of the 1992 Constitution has been vested in the judiciary. Let, let me go straight to their point. So they're saying that when a court is seized with jurisdiction to hear a matter, okay. nothing should be done to usurp the judicial power that has been vested in the court by the Constitution of Ghana. In effect, the state of affairs before the court was seized with the matter must be preserved until the court delivers its judgment. Uh -huh. Now listen, mm. this is so, whether or not the court has granted an order to preserve the status quo. not let's repeat this is a court mm. case which will have the effect of interfering with the fair trial of the case or undermine the administration of justice so mm. that film said i want xyz that's why i told you that no matter how bogus okay you've read it everybody said ah this is ah what is this even some people say ah is this a competent lawyer whatever the more you get angry at what you are reading the more you should be circumspect because you are not the judge. Okay. Don't take the law into your hands like the attorney general is asking parliament to do. And I'm shocked that an attorney general would tell parliament that ignore court process. I write to you, Balugun versus Eduse. Eduse was a minister. The court convicted him. Dumbo was a minister. The court convicted him. I wonder if the attorney general, why didn't he quote those cases? Look at them. Okay. And the Supreme Court referred to these cases in the Bank of Ghana case. Listen, even in the Balugun case, Justice Bafuboni says that they are not even sure that Krobo Eduse had been saved. And listen, in contempt, it doesn't even matter that you are not aware of the case. Who. So when I read the Attorney General's thing, I will agree with the film record that Attorney General was playing politics. Okay. In contempt, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Okansi, let's mm -hmm. repeat. It doesn't matter that you don't even know that the case is before the court. In the contempt. only thing that can happen if you are not aware of the, uh, the proceedings is that 
the punishment will be small. Uh -huh. it, it's a mitigating you could, you factor. Mm. Yes, but it, as for committer, you'll be committed, or we say convicted. And the Supreme Court is saying, this is best one to Article 125. Okay. So if you hear an argument like, oh, when it comes to constitutional functions, you cannot use an application for injunction to stop it, then you don't understand what the Supreme Court is saying. They say the meaning of Article 125 Clause 3 is that when a matter is brought to court, stop. So right. if you come and tell me that, oh, this particular function I'm exercising is a constitutional function, so you cannot use ordinary injunction to stop, then please go and read uh, Benjamin Dufour versus Bank of Ghana. And you see, the thing about it is that the Supreme Court, it's not right. just one. So you see Bafu Boni, every now and then he repeats it. it. Look, I can go on and on apart from the extent. Ruling. Yes, he keeps mm. repeating the point. So please, the interpretation of Article 125 Clause 3 is that the meaning of putting a matter before the, uh, the courts of Ghana is that once a matter has been brought, don't usurp their power. Usurping okay. their power is a breach of Article yeah. 125, okay, Clause 3. Yes. Okay. So but then, okay, if I, 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 no, I, I, gentlemen, no, 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 no you, 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 wait, wait, you will. All of you, you will have your mind. No, I, 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 I make reference to, no, 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 you, you will conclude. Because this is, we are not ending this matter. Let me bring in Justice Shemsheim, because, you see, that but reference that you made, you wait, yeah. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm yeah. coming, I'm coming. Gentlemen, hold on. Please. Um, that Justice Buffo Bonny ruling that you make is indeed the case mm. that a number of times, about five times or so, mm. what mm -hmm. I'm reading, mm. he makes reference to this, this particular aspect that you re referenced minutes mm. ago. Mm. Justice Shemsai, now, is it based on the foundation I have given in this particular case of the lawyer Dafia Mekpo and the Attorney General's position as espoused in that statement that he received, uh, received earlier, uh, is it correct to say respectfully that the suit is, in this case, lawyer Dafia Mekpo's suit is not properly constituted in accordance with rules 46.3 of the CI 16, to the extent that such an act will be struck out where a statement of case in support of the plaintiff's writ is not filed within 14 days? Um, thank you very much. I think the, the rule is very clear on this, and there are case laws that, I mean, cases that support the proposition that when you file a writ, you are not bound I mean, in the Supreme Court, when you file a race in the Supreme Court invoking the original jurisdiction, you are not bound to file your statement of case at the same time. You have 14 days within which to file your, your statement of case. Now, when you fail to file your statement of case within that 14-day you know, period, the defendant has the uh, opportunity to file a motion to strike out the, the rates. Now, what that means is that until the defendant files, you know, the a motion to strike out the, the, the rate, uh, the, the rate is active. So it is not correct to suggest or to say that when you file a rate at the Supreme Court invoking the original jurisdiction of the, of the court and you've not filed a statement of case, that rate is ineffective or is incapable of or is impotent. The rate remains potent until such a time that the court will strike it out. So I think that is the correct proposition, uh, the correct position of the law. Now, the the problem we seem to be having in respect of injunction is that you see, injunction itself is a discretionary remedy. Yes, we have rules that govern the the discretion which is used to grant injunction, and the rules. All of them, if you watch, if you read every injunction case properly decided, you will see that the judges are referring to the nature of the, sub, of, of the subject matter or the nature of what we are preserving. So the court will not say that there is an injunction merely because um, uh, there is an injunction. Uh, inter the court will not, the, the, the principle used to decide interim injunction, interlocutory injunction, and all, and, 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 and those intermediate injunction. They are the same. Basically, like uh, Martin Pebu said, they are basically to preserve you know, the subject matter. 
So even if you file your, your, your motion and the motion, if you file a case and there's a ultimate or final you know, relief of injunction, the courts are going to treat that relief as if it is something you want to preserve pending the determination of the case, that is interlocutory. Now, why are we even here in the first place? Courts look at cases in totality before they, 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 they place another of injunction. And there are decisions which also say that the mere fact that someone has filed, you know, a case, okay, someone has filed a case and has filed an application for an injunction, it doesn't mean that then someone who has the right to do something should automatically stop. There, there are cases to that effect. And there are cases that also say that, look, once somebody files the motion, I mean, once someone files the case, and the relief in the case means, I mean, requires an injunction, you are not supposed to do anything that will overreach, you know, the court. So there are cases like that. There are cases also that say that, look, when you file a case and you don't file an interlocutory, you know, injunction, the other party is not bad from doing what they want to do. But what we, what this, all these cases have in common, and what we, we don't seem to be addressing is that the court made this pronouncement depending on the nature of the act which is in question. So the, there's no one statement that covers all situations. So let's give an example. If I'm here today and I file an injunction and I, and I file a case where I'm saying that TV3 should not uh, TV3 should not broadcast a particular, I mean, should not broadcast for a particular period. Now look at it. TV, TV3 must stop broadcasting merely because I have gone to court on an allegation that they shouldn't do something. You know, that is what the, the principle we said that once the case is filed, you should stop, you know, uh, you should stop whatever you are doing pending the determination of the case. But these are some of the consequences that you can have. Some of them are really absurd. And, and even if a court and a court will not, court will not, you know, will, the law is not that much of an ass as we used to, we, we seem to say. That is why all, in all cases, we need to consider the nature of the act in question. And that is why this case is becoming, you know, complicated. It's becoming complicated because if, if we have to go by the principle that the Attorney General advised the President of that, anytime there is a, a parliamentary procedure, okay, and someone has a problem with any part of the procedure and goes to court and seeks an injunction, then everything must stop pending the determination of the case. Do you know the effect of that on, 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 on governance and, and everything? And, and here, we are not even talking about uh, the issue of, we are, we are not even talking about uh, financial consequences. I was in court one day when, you know, one of the cases that we are doctor, um, one of the LGBT cases, and the court was repeatedly asking the, the applicant that, are you telling us that because you have filed, you know, because you have filed this case, parliament should stop legislating on the matter? So is this the Amanda, the Amanda Odoi case? Yes, Dr. Amanda Odoi. You know, the, the, what people don't know is that this case has gone to the Supreme Court with an injunction application, and the Supreme Court had dismissed, you know, the, the injunction application against the speaker. That was oh. somewhere last year or so, either last year or early this La, year. Last year, August, I think. It was August, exactly. yeah, thereabout. Yeah, so so when we come back today, and, so, and, and what was the reason for the court's decision? The court was basically telling the plaintiff that, we have to weigh the balance of what? Convenience. You, I mean, suspending the work of parliament, which affect the whole country, as against your claims in the in the race, which is you alone. Which one do you think we should do? Those were the questions the court was asking. And, and that is exactly what the court asked was, you know, uh, injunction application. They'll be asking you questions. Do you think that when we do this, as compared to allowing the, which one is having more, you know, more severe you know, consequences. Those are the things that we looked at. And I am particularly surprised that the Attorney General, after advising the President to not do anything pending the determination of the matter, would turn around and say that when it comes to the case of the Speaker, the Speaker must do, must continue to, to act even though the case has not been decided. And all these issues about the time of filing, the time of doing this, uh, when it was he conducted a search, I mean, you see, let's not go into those aspects because if we go there, there are so many things that we can bring out which the public will be disappointed, you know, in. I mean, if I file, if I go to court today and I file a search, do you know how long it takes me to get a search report on the average? 
You know, it takes me, you know, it takes me no, no, no less than a week to get a search report. So if you are telling me that someone goes to court and he is able to file a search in the morning and by 30 minutes time or whatever, he has a report of the court or, or of, the, of the search. I mean, what does that tell you? So let, let's not even, I don't want us to even go to those details, but the main issue before us is, and I, and I think I like this line of cases and I like what is going on because it will give the Supreme Court an opportunity to make a pronouncement on some of these issues because every day these things come up and we are not really sure whether because someone has gone to court, we should stop acting in a particular way hmm. or because someone has filed an injunction, we should stop acting. And, and, and look, from where I sit, okay, from where I sit, it is very difficult for me to be convinced, okay, it is very difficult to be con for me to, to be convinced that merely because someone goes to court on an issue, a constitutional command, okay, a hmm. constitutional command which is meant to deal with national issues, should stop because someone is in court when the court itself has not made any order, you know. And so, so I, I think that these cases, these number of cases, are very important. And I'm happy that we are all dealing with, we are all asking these questions because I believe by the end of these cases, the Supreme Court will make a very definite pronouncement on this issue whether when someone is commanded by the Constitution to do something, another person can go to court and merely because he has filed. An, an application for an injunction or is seeking an injunctive relief, the, the, the person should stop acting and wait for the court to decide the matter. Secondly, and I think our, our court system, our Supreme Court must also um, begin to uh, look at some things. I, I have seen in the, in the US, okay, and that, not just in the US, in other jurisdictions, some cases carry agent, agents, you know, some cases are treated as agents, even in the courts. So a couple of weeks ago, there was a case where there was a standoff between the Texas, you know, Texas uh, Army <clears throat> versus the United States Army concerning the border. Mm -hmm. Within a couple of days, the cases were the cases were filed in the U.S. Supreme Court and were decided, and 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 the court gave its decision. And I think that we there must be a way of of treating some of these cases with some level of you know agency. Rather than letting them lie down just like any other ordinary case, there must be, there definitely must be a way because all cases don't have the same effect. And all cases mm -hmm. are not necessarily, yes, justice is blind to whatever, but the administration of justice also means that we must, we must be responsive to some issues. I, I, I would honestly be expecting that by now, at least some of these injunction applications would have been decided. Because if we want to hold the principle that, if we want to hold the principle that the mere filing of an injunction, an injunction could is enough to stop a constitutional command from being performed, then we, the court should be responsive in the sense that when such injunctions come, the court will quickly hear them and discharge and, and determine the matter so that public business or governance can go on. But if we are going to hold that principle that when someone files an injunction, then everything must stop, including constitutional commands, and we are not going to be very responsive to it, then we are causing harm to, to, to governance, and that will affect all of us, including the courts and even the, the, the whole system of government. So I think there must be a way of resolving these issues, and I think these cases present to us an opportunity to settle these things once and for all. And that is the positive thing about what is going on. Uh, secondly, you see, I have observed our Attorney General over a long period, over some period of time, and I think that, you see, Attorney General is supposed to be for the Republic. Okay, an attorney general is an attorney general for the whole republic, for the whole state. There's a difference between being a regime lawyer. You see, when you're a regime lawyer, your, your primary objective is to do everything that it takes, okay, to keep the regime going. And that, that, that's different from being an attorney general. Attorney general is supposed to be someone who sits behind and observes the national implication of everything and gives an advice and try to actually you know, reconcile differences. During this, the term of this attorney general, there have been more dispute between arms of government, especially parliament and the executive, than any other attorney general. Why, why, why so? So because the attorney general's advice seems to be tailored in a particular way to protect regime interests rather than national interest. And so, and that is one thing we all need to be, to be concerned about. If your attorney general is the leader of the bar, all of us, he lists every lawyer, his opinions are heavy on the court. When you go to court, with, with, with an attorney general on the other side. 
The courts are going to give the attorney general priority in most cases. That is not to say that they are going to give him rulings or decisions. But in the administration of the case, the attorney general have overwhelming advantage. That is because of the weight of the office of the attorney general. The attorney general is seen as someone who is representing the national interest, and his words sometimes even carry weight when he's speaking from the bar. What he says in terms of fact, the court hardly questioned, you know, the, the, the attorney general. But when you have a situation where the attorney general seems to be giving, even when he gives advice to the executive and the speaker benefits for, you know, seeks to apply the same advice, he quickly writes another letter to tell the speaker that, no, this is not for you to benefit from it, it's for the president to benefit from. It doesn't work that well for the office. And I think that we shouldn't be seen as a regime attorney general rather than, we should be seen as national attorney general. The office comes with, with a lot of responsibility. And I think that is what we should be focused on from, from that, 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 that perspective. So, so for you, to the extent that, yes, there's a fundamental legal principle that no two cases are the same, to the extent that the Attorney General advises the President not to go ahead with accenting the anti-LGBTQ plus bill into law because of these pending cases at the Supreme Court, that same brush or that same principle should be applied in the cases of, of the approval of the ministers because there is this... Uh, Nelson wasn't a fair pursuit in court. That, that is exactly so. Personally, I've already told my personal position. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that the mere fact that someone has filed a motion in, 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 in court, you know, seeking to stop a constitutional command from being performed, then that constitutional command must stop pending the determination of the case. I don't believe, I, I don't subscribe to that school of thought. But I know of decisions of the courts that upheld that, and I know decisions of the court that even support the position I'm taking. My point, my point, however, is that when you're an attorney general, you give an advice, and the advice is implemented. You don't turn around and tell another person that, no, you are not supposed to do it. And based on what? Based on the fact that that person's relief is not interlocutory and that his relief is on the final rate. So, I mean, that kind of distinction is even petty and, and it doesn't, doesn't really, you know, sustain any, uh, any water because the truth of the matter is that the court's objective, even courts can give injunction without any application. Courts can look at the case and by themselves decide that no, the nature of this case requires me to stay you, to stop you from doing this pending the termination of the matter. So if the purpose of an injunction is to prevent people from overreaching the court, then it won't matter whether it was an interim injunction, interlocutory application, or final injunction. The purpose is the same. So for the Attorney General to turn around and say that in the president case, his is uh, what interlocutory injunction has been filed, and in the in the what in your case, yours is just final relief, then you are supposed to carry on and can overreach the, the courts while the president cannot carry on and overreach the court. And do you remember that this same issue came up with the 11? What advice did the Attorney General give the President when he was signing the e levy? So, you see, the Attorney General's behavior is, is lacking the consistency that law requires. It, it appears that he's doing more of regime, you know, advice. It's like a, a private person advising a private client on how to weave through situations. But that is not, that, that is not, I don't think that is the office, the job of the Office of Attorney General to be, to be doing so. Now, uh, a number of things you have said is quite consistent with uh, the issues that have been raised here, but there's a point of departure which you, you disagree with Lawyer Martin Pebble's uh, uh, position earlier about the president not accenting to this anti LGBTQ plus bill because uh, this interlocutory injunction cases in court. Lawyer, the, that's the point of departure, but yes. I just wanted to make a very quick point because I need to go for a quick break and come back. Yes. Yes. So uh, that one, I've already made the point that, mm -hmm. please, um, uh, so Dr. Sai, as I read, at the 125 clause 3, the Supreme Court says that that is it. That is their interpretation. Wait. So we can no longer place another part of the Constitution above Article 125 clause 3. No. They are very clear. For emphasis, you heard them. They say 125. Uh, if, yeah. if I may quickly make this point. Yeah. If I may quickly make this one, when yes, I was right. making my point, if, if I may make yes. I my position is not that we should disregard the Supreme Court's decision on, on the matter. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is that the decision, I'm questioning, you know, I'm questioning the, 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 the decision in the sense that if that position is to be carried through, it has consequences. We must be ready 
to accept the consequences that when we decide that that is what we are going to be doing, then we should be ready for the fact that governance may not be able to proceed. Oh, okay. And, if that position, and I said another thing that mm -hmm. if that position is supposed mm -hmm. to be, if that position is supposed to stand, yeah. then there must be a system mm -hmm. of expediting action on such applications. Okay. Yes. But if keep that position and will not decide cases on time, and cases can last for a year, two, or sometimes, you know, then then the, clearly there's a problem with the, with the, with the, with the position in, okay. in, in the case. I, I, I think that that's, so that's where, the, because you mm -hmm. advise mm -hmm. council, uh, Chair Dafia Report, to apply for an expedition. No. Yes, expedition exactly. So we are aligned. For the abridgment of time. Yes, okay. yes. So Second point, just briefly. So on the interlocutory uh, relief that uh, on our... Honorable Dafer Mekor put mm -hmm. on the thing. Something says, Ladia mm -hmm. he says he was in court and there was a case involving the EC and they said such a relief is sufficient. It's yeah. sufficient. It's sufficient okay. that you put that interlocutory relief. And you know, it's an old thing. So me, I'm even happy Samson saw mm -hmm. one in the Supreme Court. You see, in our practice as lawyers, when you come and meet very good seniors doing that thing, you as a young it, man, you it, should be yeah. very slow to think this is yeah. wrong. You, you know it. No, so there's precedence, you there's, mean? There's precedence. I mean, I to... saw it 17 years ago. You see it very often. You see the old lawyers put it there. They do it for a good purpose. Then somebody will come today and see, seek to say that, oh, I know it better than the old people. Meanwhile, you can't even cite one case that says that it should not be done. <laughs> okay. that, that's the thing. Right. Uh, thank you. And, 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 uh, and to, uh, to add to that, that's to, the to, like, to yes, add to in that. a minute, quickly. I, I, have, I have been in court in my own case where a judge warned the other party that, mm -hmm. where a judge warned the other party that if, if, if there's, a, there's a, a relief for injunction in the rate, so if you go ahead and you do what you, are, you, you think you want to do, regardless of the fact that there is no formal application for interim or interlocutory injunction, I am going to cite you for contempt mm -hmm. and warn the person, which is, the, so that is why you cannot say that Without a formal application for interlocutory injunction, a court cannot use, you know, a, a, an injunctive relief on the rate to, to, to sanction you. In fact, even without any injunctive relief, Excellent. the court can itself, yeah. you know, can itself give you give, give uh, other parties to refrain from doing things that will prejudice the case or overread the decision of the court. Excellent, <laughs> Doctor Justice Shams. I thank you, and but stay with me. I'm going to go for this quick break. When we're back, there's an aspect of that exclusive interview with the Attorney General that you'd want to stay with us and hear because it brings up other questions. We'll be back shortly after this quick break. This is Key Point. Resident in our vibrant regions, brace yourself for an unforgettable and transformative journey with Nana Kwame Pediakon as he embarks on the groundbreaking regional listening tour. From bustling cities to the serene landscapes of Ghana, say hello to a leader who genuinely listens to your concerns, dreams, and hopes for a better community and country. A leader who is ready to get things moving again with you and by you. Nana Kwame Bedia, e banga sankasa, e ba e, e bona, yena zoa, ngwa nan oliba. He's coming live and colored to your communities. Get ready, it's your time to be heard. My name is Princess Fathia Nkrumah and join me this weekend on The Lady Circle. Lisa Dominic actually made a statement. She is looking forward to seeing African actors earn royalties for their work. The NFA will have to engage with directors and actors and then based on those um, conversations decide on who would be best suited to helping the guild and then we move from there. But for Ghana, I don't know. I just don't see light at the end of the tunnel. I'm worried. It's very problematic. Oh, wait. Games. oh wait, um, wait, oh, jump oh, on the dream. You jump on the <laughs> Have you ever disliked a movie everyone seemed to love? Yeah, every now and again I'm thinking, what's a crap? 
The Lady Circle shows this Saturday at 6 p.m. on TV3. Brought to you by Yaz Sanitary Pod. Onga. Yum Vita. MTN. Cowbell. Our Milk. <laughs> Time to witness the sensational clash of talents in the Big O Family Dance Semifinale. Six extraordinary performances will take center stage, blending the uplifting beats of gospel with the electrifying performances of battle. But the stakes are high. Only four families will secure a spot in the grand finale. I'm quite sorry. No bit to no tonko no da. So suffering can say, hmm, my wolf from that can be sour. Any pami and say behu, and you're better. This Saturday, in the big old family dance semi-finale to vote your favorite family, dial star 713 star 19 hash or download the TV3 reality app to vote. Big O Family Dance, big up you move. Big O Family Dance Season 2 shows Saturdays at 8 p.m. on TV3. Brought to you by Big O Drinks. Whether they like me or not, Thank you. I will still you. I don't want to experience another second, you know, handbrake and all that. It'd be nine ladies at the sea for him. Mm -hmm. Because you go, son, you go carry my cousin come here. Like, you, you have your cousin here? Hey. Your cousin? You see, let him not worry, I worry. When there is love, Mistakes are forgiven. So what is this? that? This is so expensive. Yeah, you see, that is you my promise. She's trying to blackmail. No, 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 this is not blackmailing. Please. <laughs> Date Rush shows every Sunday at 8 p.m. on TV3. Don't miss it. Date Rush is sponsored by Heaven Black Mosquito Spray and Coil. And Napa Foods. They watch up money. Feel moisturizer. Obuasi Bitters. Close up complete fresh protection. Geisha Moringa and Geisha Black Soap. Deluxe Acrylic Paint. Adonko. Remy Spices. Stop call from Ernest Chemist. Dano Milk. Okay, welcome back. This is Key Point on TV3. We're live on uh, 3FM 92.7. Also live on TV3 Ghana on Facebook, DSTV channel 279, all across the world on 3news.com. I have a number of your messages I'll read. I just want to do this one minute each because there's that consistent messages I'm seeing about some level of consensus being built going forward because and as much as this is good for our democracy it also has its own implications going forward and i think that that's what just dr shem i was talking about this being the good aspect of how things are playing out mm -hmm. is the impact it would have on our democracy going forward because certainly some of these ills cannot fester that would also give us a lot of headache and, and things to think think about um uh, Dennis, um, we're rounding up on this matter. Yeah, yes, I've You see, for, for me, mm -hmm. all the arguments that are being made by the lawyers, uh, they are fair. Some of them are their opinions, some of them are their own principles, they stand by, they are fair. But you see, where I think we should bring the issue is that specificity. The Speaker of Parliament, I mean, all the PR that my, my, my friend, um, Dr. Justice is trying to do for the Speaker, it won't wash. The speaker, when he was speaking, oh, no, this is no, what he no, said. No, 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 why? No, but you, no, no, but no, the man is not. Don't be the, ah, no, no. are you complaining? I'm no, there no, for no, why? No, no, you, you, Is he complaining? You are not inviting him into the conversation. Yeah, so what, so what so is wrong with the fellow? What's the problem? You, you make your point. He's not, I said he's VPR. No, no, That's what he's doing. He's VPR. Why? What's your problem? But is there any problem with him being VPR for the I'm not even dwelling on this. So let me make a point. So this is what the speaker said. Honorable members, I also bring to your attention the receipt of a process from the court titled Roxanne Dafia Meko versus the Speaker of Parliament and the Attorney General. Then he quoted the suit number. Which process was served on the 19th of March 2024? That is fair. Which is actually true. 
which is actually true. Mm -hmm. Then he says, and an injunction motion on notice. An injunction motion on notice. Mm -hmm. An injunction motion on notice. How do you notice. understand that? Oh, wait, don't worry. It's not about how I understand it. Seeking mm -hmm. to restrain the speaker from proceeding with the vetting and approval of the names of the persons submitted by His Excellency the President until the provisions of the Constitution are satisfied. Honorable members, in the light of this process, the House is unable to continue to consider the nomination of His Excellency the President in the spirit of upholding the rule of law until after the determination of the application, after the determination of the application for the interlocutory injunction by the Supreme Court. Now, follow me. Okay. No, no, follow me. Don't, 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 no, don't. No, 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 no. Follow me, I, follow I'm, me. I'm mindful of that. Yes, yes, that my time is on you. you. And then, yes. and then the next morning, the next morning, somebody goes to court, the Attorney General. He says, please cause a search to be conducted in the registry and endorse your findings here too. One, and we are educated, we are all learning who. Whether or not a statement of case in support of the plaintiff's writ has to date been filed in accordance with the Supreme Court rules, then the answer from the registry was, only the writ has been filed. Only the writ has been filed, which is not in doubt, because that writ, as at the time the speaker was speaking, had actually been served on him. So that, that's no problem. Then there's a second point. The second question to the registry of the Supreme Court was whether or not an application for interlocutory injunction, an application for interlocutory injunction, remember, the speaker had referred to this a night before, that there is an interlocutory application for interlocutory injunction, which he thinks that we must wait for the determination of that application, has been filed by the plaintiff and if so, when was it filed? Then the Supreme Court says no. No such application for interlocutory injunction had been filed. Then the final question. Whether or not the application for interlocutory injunction has been served on any of the parties to this suit, and if so, when? Don't forget, the Speaker had said was on notice. The Supreme Court says no. Then the next morning, the next, that same morning, when the, this search report had been done, Honorable Roxen Dafiemeko, okay, actually now goes to file his application that next day. So if there is anybody playing politics, then my, 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 my friend Justice Ram is wrong. It's not the Attorney General. If there's anybody playing politics, it is the Speaker of Parliament who had left the country, funded by the state, left the country and had no intention to come back, had actually left Parliament to be steered by the deputy speakers, but decided that because there has been a letter written by the, the secretary to the president to parliament, which he disagreed with, he decided to fly back into the country, spend eight hours to take this decision based on information that the court don't have, but he has as a speaker, and makes an emphatic statement. That is the point we are making. Okay. I agree with Justice, Justice mm -hmm. S.I. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I'm not a lawyer, but I think that really on case-by-case -case basis, there are certain things that if there, there are not restrictions or restraint, maybe after the determination of the case, it could affect me. I'm not a lawyer, mm -hmm. but I agree with that. And that, even that is by case by case basis. Well, Certain well, times, it doesn't okay, matter. Thank you. The outcome, please let me land. Just 30 seconds. The, 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 outcome, the outcome won't yes. matter. But the facts here, after all the conversations and all the gymnastics is that the speaker made a specific reference to, which to was case. not in existence. Well, the, the point is that, Aliza, as point well, you, you've got... And he was doing point. politics. The, uh, so, the justice can make his case point, but he shouldn't do is here. PR for so the I'm speaker. So, I'm going to give him... Roxy to use a PR Nelson for the speaker. Yes. Yes. The, is Dennis aware that when the president went to meet the diplomatic community and spoke about the please, 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 please. and made a reference to a case that has been filed in the court, actually there was no case. Is he yeah. aware? It was under Today he's paid by a mere omission on the part of a speaker. Oh, so he's an omission. Yes. Yeah, we are good. That's no, fine. we are not good. Oh, but it's an omission. You spend oh, oh, oh. time to denigrate the speaker. Is for, isn't the president supposed oh, by the by, oh, by the state? Gentlemen, hold on, hold on, hold on. When you were speaking, I kept quiet. Oh, oh, hold on. 
So I will urge you to so, keep so, quiet so, so and I, listen I, I, to I, I, me okay, in pain. Counsel, <laughs> counsel, what I would listen also, to me counsel, in pain. What I would also do yes. is that don't, don't invite him. Yes, if you invite okay, me, I'll come. Now, the president of this republic spent our money to go and meet the diplomatic call and lie to them that, and lie to them. Fine. That a writ has been filed in court when there was no writ, and, ba and based on that, based on that, he was going to stay his hand in appending his assent to a bill. In, in which case, a, a, in any case, that bill was yet to be brought before him. So he was speaking to matters that had not even got into court. You are not pained by that. You are not scandalized by that. You are scandalized by a speaker who has returned from an official trip. To adjourn the house, the house was officially due to be adjourned on on Wednesday, the twentieth of March. So, Speaker didn't just fly to Ghana to make this announcement and flew back. Okay, that 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 is a very scandalous matter to say. Mm -hmm. Two, the Attorney General today he has forgotten his civil procedure. He's forgotten that when I fire it. I am, I am permitted within the rules of court to file my statement of case within 14 days. He's forgotten that. I made reference He's to forgotten that. his law. So he goes to a court to conduct a search whether or not I have filed my statement of case in addition to the writ. And the court registrar told, told him that no. So, so my attorney general, my learned honorable attorney general, mm -hmm. should calm down. You should talk laws more. Should stop talking politics. It's too much. It's, it's, it's coming, damaging his reputation. Three. The Attorney General says what? He attacks my person in a very garrulous manner. What does the mean of what? that? What the what? Mean? What? In a very garrulous manner. Meaning? He's talking, mean? he's talking, chippy, 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 all over the place. And, spell it. and he's attacking your person? <laughs> uh, of course. <laughs> what, what is, when what we mean? say somebody's garrulous, <laughs> a person talks. With no substance. Which language is that? That's Garou. That's English. Look it up. Th thank you. Thank you. Please That's English. On, on. Yes. And, and attacks my person and says that I go to court. There's no substance in the matter. Is, is it a court? He has constituted himself into a court and making pronouncements in a matter that is a party. I am saying that he's lost sight of the fact that the communication to parliament came in one single document. That I am alleging that the president is inviting parliament to condone an unconstitutionality. Okay. So if I if if I have cause to complain, my course of action is based on his entire action, not part of it. The attorney general should 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 be should be discerning to appreciate this. Okay. Well, you see, there. Let me go on to a few messages because. This one here says, good morning, Alfred. Uh, Niyama Matefio. If Martin Pebu says the decision of the president to stay off his hands on the anti-gay bill because of a court order is right, please, I need sincere answers on this. Why didn't the president stay his hands off on the E-Levy bill when the same was sent to court by the minority? Let me be on the E-Levy uh, bill. Uh, 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 Vomao went to court to withdraw GRA from collecting the money. Yes. The Supreme mm. Court said no. Mm. So, mm. It, 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 you, you so you, you yes. say that essentially the point I think made is if the wrong was done then, yes. that same wrong should not be repeated now exactly. to square it off. So exactly. We, are we making, should forget about the wrong in the past. And we are making progress that, because that, we, are, we continually ask, on the pre, uh, ask the president to up his governance. Up the governance because it's too abysmal. And, the and now, oh, right, oh, 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 the, 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 lo, lo, and now, hold on, citizens hold on, are. Hold on. Then you see how we are doing double standards. <laughs> but here today, citizens are asking him to go back to bad governance. Then what are we doing? So two steps forward, then four steps backwards. Okay. No, that's right. done. All right, let's uh, move forward. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Thank you. Let me go on to the next matter, gentlemen. Gentlemen. Let me go on to the next matter. This one here says that. Um, okay. The I am still surprised. This one is from Papa Bishu from Accra. It says, I'm so surprised seeing or hearing people defending this matter. When I remember the way the president ordered for the demolition of the those 21 judges' houses, you say, um, it goes on and on. You talk about, yes, yeah, talk about reckless governance. <laughs> also, Dr. Nyaho Nyaho Tamaklo, good morning. Thank you very much for your message. And uh, it's actually 
uh, also commending the conversation this morning as well. Mm -hmm. I do appreciate your message. Thank you very much mm -hmm. for the message. Oh, and, and God this bless is, this him. Is, this and you know, he predicted. Yes. He told us that, 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 that bad governance and the good work will suffer. Dr. Tabaku yeah, says, yeah, no, God it, bless you. It, yes, and we didn't hear you loud enough. Okay, this one here says Prince Henry. Prince Henry from Kufuridia so says, is, I am still scandalized scandalize and amazed at President mm -hmm. Kufuado for trying to run away from his own mm -hmm. shadow. Mm -hmm. The Speaker of Parliament shouldn't... Mm -hmm. Gentlemen, your microphones are active. The Speaker of Parliament shouldn't allow any bill to be passed until Nanado is ready to receive the anti lgbtq plus bill and pen his signature to it. Thank you, Prince Henry from Kufuridia. This one here from Dr. Kwame Asante says the law is even clearer in English than in procedure this morning as explained by your lawyers and panelists this morning. Um, thank you for the program and the conversation this morning. It has enlightened us all on what is going on. Kudos to your lawyers this morning. Thank you. This one here says that I am sure Dennis Miracle Sabuaji has been also enlightened this this morning. I think that's just one part of your... Okay, so the next one here is that the fundamental issue, apart from all these legal issues, is, and I want to find out from lawyer Martin Pebble, whether this also impacts on the cost of governance as well, because in the end, this matter bothers on even the size of government for that matter, which we must also consider. And uh, even though these ministerial nominees have their approval also in limbo, how does it impact on us as a country, you see, with caretaker ministers in place? Yes, do that quick, quickly. And I have to... Uh, yeah, 30 seconds. Justice so Shams, I, I have said that uh, it's good riddance that these ministers have been kept in limbo. So we've reduced the size of government through the speaker's action, and it's good. Look, let's not forget that when you go to the ministries, they are very experienced people, technocrats. Lots of these uh, nominee ministers, uh, I mean, can't match those technocrats. Mm -hmm. They can't match those technocrats. So there's no fear that work will not be done. Rather, politicians go to sit there and they, uh, what do you call it, monopolize the work, the contracts and all that, so that they can make money. So this is good readance that the directors and those people can work. The technocrats can work, all right? So it's good readance. That's how I'm for anything that will make sure that these guys don't even go into office. We don't need an overbloated government. But we have said they can do it. All right. With 60 ministers. A so, Epufado okay. should learn from Baumia, who says he can govern with 60 ministers. So, mm -hmm. Epufado should learn from Baumia. Mm -hmm. Baumia says he I mean, needs you just 60 for? ministers. Oh, okay, so, no. So, that is so, it. So, so, if you talk about the lean government, mm -hmm. which I think is, is, is what your candidate That's is promising. That's what I'm talking about. Uh -huh. I'm talking no. about Cote d'Ivoire has 40 ministers. Cote d'Ivoire uses 40 ministers. Work at the ministry is monopolized. They're called so, so that they hold make on. money. It's, ah, not it's in the okay. constitutional no, review commission. Okay, okay. okay. The judgment that comes. Right. Ah, then you are okay. so, 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 wait, 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 wait. So you're talking whole... about certain certain ills in our system. We, we have seen issues of some procurement yes. matters that have gone wrong, even yes. under the under ministers for that matter. Yes. You, you, yes. 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 No, 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 I'm coming, I'm coming, yes. I'm coming. He made no, the no, no. point. You see, yes. you are and I stand uh, by, by it. it. We are, we are, I'm not going to so what go are you on doing? this path. Now, Lawyer Martin, people, you are making specific response mm. to a statement mm. that was made in a mm. text. I want mm. you to round up on that yes. point. Yes. Uh -huh. So I made the point that the politicians are monopolizing the work, especially the contracts, so that they sign and they can get the kickbacks and everything related to those contracts. They are even sidelining people what who have it? opposition views. So, so I rely on the so corruption perception index. Okay. I rely on the Post judgment that commissions work report. Post so you rely on which specific uh, references so, to make this point. So, right? yeah, so constitutional. Uh, oh, but it's okay. obvious. Don't do that. Okay, oh, okay, 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 hold on. Okay, okay, you are lawyer, okay, you know okay that's fine. So you say. I'm a lawyer. You, Sam. Okay, right. Uh, Sam. Oh, it's a okay. ah, But it's okay. even more concerning that yeah. even we have some. It is not so concerning. We, at least it is better. It's an appropriate <laughs> way to communicate. When you no, say wait. some, don't okay. worry, let's no, no, so that that's we can make progress. That's that's that, 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 that is not important to you. I should draw your attention to So, look, if you say that some politicians mm -hmm. can be classified to be corrupt, mm -hmm. and also, or what the people have said, 
we cannot say that that is okay. But you can say we that should be, I'm coming. We should be be aspiring. Okay that. I'm coming. We should be aspiring. But you were to okay when you made a whole governance and politicians. But you were okay who, when you made a whole I'm not. I'm not. I'm so not. Then, I'm so not what's your, point? So what's your point? What I'm saying Who is, is making that, that as a governance you're making, you're making and, and as a country, we should be aspiring towards having a governance system. That does and not who is debating you on that? Who, who is debating uh, you on that? That's the same side, exactly. is it not? Exactly. So you see, because we are at a point exactly. where you yeah, say that yeah. in the end, all of what is happening now must endure to the you benefit of this country, country isn't country. it? Is so this is where we are. Exactly. Exactly. And True. going forward, what should be the result of this shoot and everything that we are seeing now? Yeah, so um, let me just take us back to the reason why this is even happening. You know, this issue of this, um, you know, the president's position on private member bill has been, he's been on this since last year, right? But let's look at the origin of this, that, that provision in the constitution which says that a private member bill should not have any effect on, you know, that provision came into our constitution at a point when the during the colonial times when a majority of when when indigenous Ghanaians took over the majority of of, of parliament mm -hmm. and the colonial you know the british were became minority in the parliament so they put this particular provision in the constitution at the time so that they can the, the british who were then in the minority would hold on to the expenditure power of of of, of the of the colony I am particularly surprised that we have kept that provision in the constitution up to this point because it serves actually no useful purpose, right? It serves no useful, useful purpose. Mm -hmm. If a private member proposes a bill, the bill still goes through all the you know checks that the president bills you know go through. So the impression that when a private member proposes it, then no one, I mean, it means that it is taking power away from the president. It, it is neither here nor there. There's actually no substance. In, 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 in the provision, except to, to, to frustrate the representative of the people from, from, from passing laws that they think will be in the benefit of, of, the, of, of the public. So it is something that we probably even have to discuss more than all these other sub consequential issues. Now, on the main question of uh, whether this thing is benefiting the country, I think it is. You see, uh, democracy is, uh, let's not pretend well, whatever is happening now is politics, and there's nothing wrong with politics, right? We lawyers try to, you know, find a way to explain what is happening in terms of law. But the relationship between the executive and the legislature, the tension between them, is purely politics. And that is why anyone who understands constitutional law knows that constitutional law has a legal aspect and also what the political aspect. It's not everything which happens in, 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 in governance that you can subject to judicial you know, review. Some of the things will just be resolved by politics in themselves. So this is a, a point we are in our, in our country's you know, journey to, to greatness, where we are experiencing, I think for the first time, we are experiencing this kind of tension. And I think it's a good thing in, in the sense that it helps us to, 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 to delineate the power positions and the lines that we need to have in mind when we are governing the country. It is part of the checks and balances, you know, you know, uh, aspect of governance. And there's nothing wrong with it, except that when we lawyers enter into some of these discussions, we try to hijack everything and, and make it look like we are speaking law and the other person is speaking politics, just as the Attorney General has been trying to, to say. But the truth of the matter is that it is all politics and it's good politics. With time, we will throughout, I mean, with this, we will definitely come to a point where we will know that when someone is, is performing a constitutional command, you can file a case in court and the person has to stop, or whether you file a case in court or not, the person can carry on you know, their, 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 their business. So generally, I will agree with, with, with the school of thought that this is good, good politics. And also the issue about what, one that Dr. Kwame Asante, who sent out a message, raised about the governance cost in all of this as well. So that if we're talking about having some reduction or the lean governance structure, then we should also be taking advantage of, of this so as to ensure that 
we at least save the nation some money. I mean, at this time, and talking about the outcome of everything that's happening now, should that be one of the considerations? Yeah, it, it should. I mean, the cost on government must always be consideration. So I agree that we should consider that. But what I'm doubtful of is the question whether this is saving us money or is costing us. Um, the, the, the truth of the matter is that in the short term, we may think that this is costing in terms of, or this is saving some, some money. Mm -hmm. I mean, sorry, in the short term, we may think that this is costing us because, but in the long term, certain things will not, will not repeat themselves, you know. So, for example, there was a time when, when J.H. Mensah went to court to challenge and, and, and said that when you bring your second term, you cannot carry your ministers over, you know, from the first term to the second term. They have to go through the processes again of vetting and everything. At that time, one of the arguments that were made was that it was a useless, I mean, needless cost because the same people will be approved anyway. But over time, looking back, I think most people will agree that that impasse between the, 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 the parliament and then the executive at the time had saved us a lot of money because now ministers are aware that you cannot be in office for eight years, even if the president is your friend. You need to behave in a way that when you want to continue to be in office, you have, you have to please the generality of the people so that they can vet you again and again. So, so today, we may think that this is frustrating, this is causing a lot of tension, and this is... And, 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 and I, don't, I don't think that this has anything to do really with the LGBT issue, really. We can still discuss this state of confusion without bringing in the LGBT issue, because whatever decision we are taking now, whatever the courts will rule now, in the future will have nothing to do with LGBT. It will mm. have everything to do with how the president is supposed to behave when, when there's a, a law being passed in parliament, whether someone can interfere or interrupt the process of lawmaking and the court will come in. All these things will be resolved if the court really decide to resolve them. And they will have a better path forward in, in, in our, in our uh, democratic you know, practice. But in terms of cost, to be honest with you, I think uh, there is no loss with, with what is happening. There is indeed no, no loss with all what is happening. And, and, and just on that point that you were making, yeah, uh, yeah, can, yeah, can yeah, we conclude yeah, on that point? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, so with this, now that the numbers have uh, reduced, it means that presumably... At least in the interim. Yes, yes. So hopefully at least... Until such a time when... Yes. <laughs> If you look at the time when the ministers were asked to go, so February 14th mm -hmm. till now, so it means at least government spending on ministers would have come down, right? Is that yes. the practical uh, reflection of the situation? Uh -huh. is, is that the practical? I, I yes. Okay. Uh, they, they're still no, being paid. Uh, lawyer, lawyer, yes. Lawyer, uh, lawyer. Uh, Actually, what? no. Because Why? give me an example. Give me one. Mention one, one minister's name who probably is going through this. Mention one. I mean, some of the ministers that have so been, a Mesa, been, Mesa is going to use, tourism. So let me use Mesa. Mm -hmm. It's it's so, not saving us anything because Why? whatever Mesa was taking when he was deputy energy minister, he's still taking as a member of parliament. We have constantly made the point that not a not a single. Uh, uh, cost no, but uh, I think that the issue no. is about some of the ministers hey, that no. have not have been removed. Are, not I just mentioned so, I'm telling you that there, there is are, no cost saving. There is there not. Okay, how about the last? There is not. Yeah, there, um, is there is there is there is there there is there. What, Where is that? Where is the savings? Let, let me He's tell you. Real, so 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 in let me show you. in parliament. Oh, was my question. Okay. I have a question. So you said there is no cost. in parliament. Ambusdari, whatever Ambusdari was receiving as interior minister. That's exactly what he's still receiving as a member of Now, let me tell you. Let me tell you. As a minister, let me tell you. Ministers, you. ministers oh, receive a Okay, okay gentlemen, hold on, 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 So I have seen with my eyes at the ministries, the entertainment they give ministers every weekend when they are going there, provisions, those things they buy. Those things they buy. That's an ignorant point to make. Those things they buy, they give them. The ministers have seen with my eyes. They do. There is nothing like that. There is nothing like that. The provisions and the things they take home, those are allowed. Avoid. You won't get them. There is a difference the between not given in parliament. Is that given in parliament? Given in parliament? The provisions they give me is that given in parliament? This is not law. This is not law. So let me educate okay. you. This so, is not law. So, so no, you. I am telling you that as a matter of fact, okay. that is a some of the ignorant ah, speculations. So, 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 what? so it is not. Are you fake. saying that there is no court saving? No, element because as no, is happening no, now? no, there okay. isn't. Because you see, 
today, no, this one. whatever. Oh, let me. Okay, no, it's not well, true. We'll Ministers are giving oh, provisions. Oh, okay, so no there's no which, there's one all ministry of them, that all is of spending them. in parliament today. I mean, I want to go to specificity, so I don't mm. deal with speculations. Mention one ministry, and let's analyze that you think that as a result of this statement is saving us money. Bring it one. There is none. All as okay. a matter of so fact, are you saying that that all the, the, all the, all the, all the that that Mention one. members of parliament who were ministers, yes, who have been replaced as ministers uh -huh. and not reassigned. Yes, there is Why no. Why is it? Mention the ministry. Yeah. Mention the, 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 the figures. Are there. So, no, no, no. no. So, so, so is working. As I saw, is a minister. Yes. As I saw, he was already a minister mm -hmm. under um, Works and Housing. He is at Roads. Amakota is a member of parliament. Mm -hmm. Whatever Amakota was earning mm -hmm. as a rose minister, that's exactly what he's so earning. Oh, there's, there's. <laughs> they have been mentioned what? Okay. Uh, it's the smart. Oh, oh, right. oh, right. oh right. I'm right. telling right. you that it's not. It's not. It is not. It is not. So you are. It is not. The council. Now, Dennis, don't don't make simplistic statements. Okay. 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 Per the uh, Professor Yainti Amua mm -hmm. emoluments report, mm -hmm. ministers of state, mm -hmm. their emoluments mm -hmm. are higher than those of deputy ministers. Mm -hmm. And deputy ministers' emoluments are also higher than those of members of parliament. That is why mm -hmm. when you become, when you are a member of parliament mm -hmm. and you are moving into the executive, mm -hmm. you elect. Mm -hmm. You elect. And because the executive emoluments are higher than those of members of parliament. Mm -hmm. They normally choose that of the oh, executive emolument. Mm -hmm. right. So you can we can we can talk about the quantum mm -hmm. that in the scheme of things right. it, it may not be that. Oh, so, it is so, 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 so no, 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 Because when you look at their facility, you're not. So yes. let me tell yes. you, you can't no. educate me on this. Oh, oh okay. I'm the executive of this. Please, we approve. Okay, you're not a minister. Gentlemen, let me know what parliament Wait, let me know what parliament that approved the Yai Jai Jai report. Let me know what parliament that approved the Yai Jai It was parliament that approved the Yai Jai Jai recommendations. And I'm telling you what we approved. In fact, there are emoluments, even vehicles. MPs have only one official vehicle, they have two. So. A, 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 a V8 mm -hmm. and a saloon. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. We don't get fewer allowance. Oh, you are. Mm -hmm. Right. All right? And okay. we don't get fewer allowance. You see? Ministers of State do. Thank you. All right? So... Let me let me let me help you. Oh, to okay. This it's question. not so, about helping. So, no, no, so, it's about so, so essentially. So now, so now, now, we can, so, we so, now so, 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 by creating this statement, yes. there's a service. Yes. And I'm telling you, there's none. Oh, there Mention is. one I mean. ministry ah. that doesn't have a minister uh -huh. okay, of state uh -huh. functioning in that ministry. And that even if there's no minister of state in that ministry functioning, there is a full expenditure because that activity for which Amuakwata or Damboche would have been executing is still being executed no, by okay. either the chief director. No, no, I'm coming. Oh, the chief director no, has no, a no, 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 Relax, no, relax, no, relax. Okay, okay. Yeah, gentlemen, no, 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 gentlemen. You are interrupting me with the falsehood. I don't want me to interrupt the falsehood. You are interrupting me with the falsehood. You spoke about cost savings. Hold on, hold on. And I'm telling you that it's caretaker for health. And Slowsu is caretaker for health. So are you saying that Slowsu, apart from taking for communication, Comes to take everything, uh, what, what is his name, uh, or the assembly back, uh, quick from point. I say, I say that, uh, uh, okay, okay. That that's a very on. important point. Let me hear the key. Let me hear the key. It's important. No, 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 there's this conversation mm -hmm. is on the foundation mm -hmm. of the impact of this on our economy. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, what I want to find out from you, mm -hmm. Dennis, is that why do you say that regardless of these allowances attached to the ministerial positions, mm. there is still no cost savings in this situation where these ministers have their approvals delayed for some time okay so first of all 
in terms of limit. It is almost non-existent as a member of parliament, as a minister. It's not even taken even up to 2,000 other cities, okay? In addition to whatever is taken as a member of parliament. Okay. So that significance is important. Right. So in terms of emolument. Now, what they keep referring to is the functioner. The functions that the minister would be playing, for which reason he has to move from Accra to go to Ho to go and perform a ministerial function, which will come with maybe a fuel and a vehicle. Okay. I am saying that in the absence of a minister, in fact, if you put Ministry of Communication, a Ministry of Information together as one ministry, what you have simply done is that you have kept all the staffing and all the responsibility of Ministry of Communication intact because you can't wipe it away. Okay. And you've kept all the functions of the Ministry of Information intact. So even though the health minister is not at health to go to hold tomorrow, whoever is there, whether the chief director or the caretaker minister would still come and utilize that fuel component and travel to Ho to go and perform that function. So in terms of recurrent expenditure, in the performance of a duty of a minister in a sector, there is no cost savings. Because even whether there is a minister there or there is a measure of a ministry or not, that function would have to be performed. All right. That is a matter of fact. All right. Yeah. But, so, but what? That doesn't mean okay. that. But what? There's no cost savings. Right. Okay. There's no cost savings. Well, they, that's the truth. So, the you don't so the minister come also. and take their allowances, the entertainment. Uh, the person who go to hold mm -hmm. to perform mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. function, who will take it? All right. You saw Whether the director, the chief director, the caretaker minister, no, no. that is fine. The, 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 the function doesn't run entertainment away. Entertainment the function, thank thank you. there is nothing called it. Thank you. You are peddling on the streets. There is nothing like that. No minister goes home with provision. Ask him. He was in government. Ask him if he was going home. Were you going home when? I was wrong. No, your friends were ministers. Thank you. Maybe your, maybe your NDC now. friends were doing Thank that. We don't do much. that. <laughs> now, your you NDC so, ministers you are were doing that. We don't on do that. Point. Your microphone is off. You are <laughs> live here on Key Point. You are also live on TV3 Ghana on Facebook on 3FM 92.7. Now, the reason why he talks about being in the executive, I'm talking about Dennis Miracles, about, he's, a, he's been a former what, uh, municipal chief executive, MCU for what? Equiapim, Equiapim North, eh? This is Equiapim North. Yes. And... Uh, what with the interministerial committee on on local governance? Is it? A, oh, I see. Uh, anyway. he's attacked, no, this is not illegal attacked, mining. It's is local he, local he's government. He's always throwing things so, that he doesn't so, know. Is he so, right? This is not. Uh, 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 <laughs> now, I think people. Uh, he has no idea now, what he's talking about. Me, <laughs> and with this matter on this issue, mm -hmm. I've just received a notice that mm -hmm. on Monday mm -hmm. an action is going to be taken again mm -hmm. by you, mm -hmm. Nelson Ross in the did he say it here? It yes. you other um, no, he said it here. Uh, yes, that I am, what are I'm you going to do? I'm proceeding against the president, a mandamus, to compel him to receive the bill as passed by parliament. Oh. Yes. And no. I'm proceeding against the speaker to also do his duty under the constitution by submitting the bill. And you are, are you going not? to file yes. a case of mandamus? Yes. Just for the benefit of the viewers. What is the effect of this? Mandamus is shoot? to compel a, a public officer to do his duty under law. So you want to compel the president mm. through the court? To receive. To receive. You see, when you see, you see okay. the, the constitution yes. is very clear. Oh, you've got to the, the constitution is very clear. Okay. That when, 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 when you are compelled, when you are mandated, you are commanded Politics. to receive a bill that has been passed by parliament, you have to receive it. Politics. Politics. I see. Yeah. Now, uh, 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 now, let, uh, Justice Shemsai, uh, in respect so of vetting, <laughs> let, I'm rounding up on this matter. <laughs> so you so have decided, gentlemen, 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 thank you. Now, on going on this path of mandamus, I don't intend to, to go ahead of you on the decision you have taken on Monday to file this mandamus to compel the president to receive this anti LGBTQ plus bill, what parliament has passed. Can Parliament still pass this bill without the President's involvement or the decision not to accent? Of to course. That's no, the I mean, no, that's the okay. question to you. Uh, Justice Dr. Oh, Shemzai, okay. please. Please unmute. Unmute for me. Unmute. Un yeah. Yeah. Is it, is it, can you hear me now? Yes. 
yeah so i i you see there is a, a rule which the, the requirement is that when parliament passes the bill i mean and they should forward the president to give his assets and the president has a time limit within which to exercise the power to veto the question we always have to ask ourselves is why would the framers of the constitution give him a time frame or a, a, a timeline. timeline and when he breaches the timeline what does it mean these two questions are very important in understanding whether what the what what the president is doing the effect of what the president is doing i am of the view and i think i have spoken with a, a number of you know um senior lawyers who hold the same view that when the president you know refuses to veto and the time given him to carry out that exercise lapses he will be deemed to have waived his, his his power to veto in which case the only conclusion is that the bill has been what assented to by will by by construction so and i believe in that view there is a time for you to do an act and if you fail to do within that time you cannot hold the whole country to, to ransom so that we wait until you decide to do it that is the, the the reason why they put the timeline is to prevent a situation where a president will hold all i mean the legislative process to, uh, need to, to uh, ransom and no one can do anything and in fact when it comes to parliament itself there is also a timeline on parliament for example a bill cannot stay within in a committee of parliament beyond a certain period this is three and months that also has the same three months three months actually three, three months. months three months uh -huh. three months so, yes exactly so and, and there's a long history for these timelines we, we didn't used to have these timelines in the constitution but there was a time in our history where these committees were used as a way of frustrating the legislative process where bills would go to a, a certain office holder and they will use the delay to, to frustrate so making provision for this timeline is to prevent people to prevent exactly what the president is, is, is doing you know so the, the consequence the natural consequence of his failure to act within the time frame is that he has waived his right to veto in which case i think that anyone should go to court to compel the bill to be gazetted as if as if it was it was really you know you know assented to mm -hmm. so i would rather choose a, a, a process okay in this case the, the bill has not been given to the president has not received the bill yet but there are other three bills which he has received and has not done anything about them but rather said that he's not going to uh, give his assent that he has not vetoed either those three bills the proper i think what's next to be done is to seek a mandamus for the bill to be what gazetted as though they have been assented to and in particular this one i think uh honorable process is also a, a, a way of going about it, compelling the president to accept uh, the, 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 the transmission of the, of the bill. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, lawyer, Dr. Justice Shremsai, really appreciate you on this one. And uh, the, the issue as well of uh, the Electoral Commission. Please stay with me because the next matter we, we would also have a conversation on. I'll be joined uh, as we go on by uh, Dr. Justice Shremsai on the other uh, Zoom connection. But a number of your messages, let me first of all issue this apology that we cannot read all the messages, but I'll do well to read as many as possible. And I acknowledge all of you sending these messages as we speak close to uh, the 650 that we have received. Thank you very much. Um, Jane Laura says, Dennis Miracles, um, he says the understanding of the law has reached us all today, and we must all be educated on this matter. John Mensa says, good morning, Alfred. Watching you from Islegon, Trasaco, without light. Unfortunately, we cannot, we, we cannot watch your program on TV due to Dumso. Uh, you, you are watching on, the, on your phone now, Johnson Mensa. Hmm. Thank you. Um, Juliana Belinda Obri uh, says, uh, so, so watching us from the UK today. Um, nobody should condone the actions of LGBTQ persons. We have to make this law to stop all this happening to our children. It's not our culture, you see. Um, thank you very much. This one here. Hmm. Somebody's quoting Esther chapter 4, verse 14. I don't know what's there, <laughs> but it says, God help our motherland. Amen. Thank you. Um, this one here says that... Um, 
putting our natural resources like gold, diamond, bauxite, etc. aside, the current speaker, Bagbin, is a natural resource. We have to protect very well. And um, this one here also says that, good morning, Alfred and team, Dauda Idrisu. Please, we are still waiting for an upload of last week's program. You promised to... Oh, yes. In fact, we have uploaded last week's program on YouTube. So please make some time and, and check it because we couldn't stream it as a result of the internet issues. So please check YouTube. You will see the full complement of last week's program uploaded there as well. Kakre Samoa, lawyer, lawyer. Kakre Samoa says, before I became a lawyer, I seriously thought... You were right when you pleaded to an offense that you were guilty with an explanation. In court, you are either guilty or not guilty. There is no middle way whatsoever. It seems to me that there are persons in Ghana who think that in the case of the LGBT issue, you can say you hate it and at the same time raise enough objections to render the position of those who oppose their practice as useless. This is one has, that has to be checked you say, good morning, sir. Uh, good morning to you too. And this one here also says that uh, we must all be on the same page and hear those who have also raised concerns about this bill, as Dennis Mercosa Baji has indicated. We will all have our day in court, you say. Um, this is coming from Obrimpong Kaba. Thank you very much for uh, the messages. Now, I'll take for this quick break because we're going to the matter of the Electoral Commission, a number of things happened this week. I think that all the stakeholders in the electoral space, including ourselves, um, have matters to also consider. Both the NPP and the NDC have had a voice on these BVDs that have not been returned to the chest of the Electoral Commission and what one which must be of concern to all of us. I'll be back shortly after this quick break. Stay with us. Welcome to Elbooth Westcott Oyarifa, your gateway to a comfortable life. Located between Lagon and the tranquil hills of Pediasi, a place where the convenience of city life meets the peaceful embrace of nature. Here, safety, peace, credibility are assured, free from the worries of land guards and multiple patches of the same land. Oyarifa's strategic location offers you easy access everywhere. Build at your own pace and within your budget. Rehoboth Westcott Fast Selling Lands. Serenity, connectivity, community. Own a piece of land today. Call 0553 751 933 or 0206 823 524 or visit our website at www.com www.realbothsocialhousing.com The news never stops. If it's not breaking, developing, the news lends itself to significant analysis, broad context through explainers and the features that give stories more life. That's what we offer on Weekend Central. News, features, analysis, the full package. Weekend Central, Saturdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. on TV3. TV3, first in news. This season, two individuals. Bonds will be built. Love will exist. Betrayal will be served. Ready. The most controversial reality show hits your screen. Perfect match extra. 50,000 Ghana series at stake. If you are 20 years and above and want to find genuine love, join our private screening to be part of the show. Screening will take place at the TV3 premises. Kanda, go to moms.pmextra.tv to pay a registration fee of 500 Ghana cities and register with your details and professional photograph of yourself. Private screening for ladies will take place on the 30th of March and the 31st of March for the gentlemen. Love, betrayal, heartbreak, and triumph this April. Witness the journey of a lifetime. Perfect Match Extra Season 2 coming soon on TV3 
and pmextra.tv. After a challenging eviction Sunday, prepare to be amazed by the remaining talented kids contestants as they showcase their unique freestyle performances this week. For an exciting STEM segment and ensure your favorite contestant stays in the competition by dialing star 713 star 13 hash or downloading the TV2 reality app to vote. The winner of this year's Talenta Kids competition will embark on a 10 day educational and talent development trip to the Netherlands, powered by the CTIW Foundation, impacting our generation today and beyond. Talenta Kids, Free to play. Talented Kids shows on TV3 Sunday at 4 p.m. Powered by Indomie. Sponsored by Coco Plus. Deluxe Acrylic Paint. Frutelli Calipo. Vitamilk. Pepsodent Cavity Fighter. CTIW Foundation. CTIW Foundation. And supported by... Commission confirms that seven of the biometric devices are indeed missing. I urge the CID and the Ghana Police Service to immediately issue a statement giving us the details of their investigation so far. I am concerned and worried because that devices in the hands of an unknown person can compromise the future elections that Ghana will have. The commission recently undertook routine servicing of its biometric voter registration kits. It was during this maintenance that we discovered the theft of five laptops from the biometric voter registration kits not seven BVDs, as erroneously stated. The stolen laptops cannot be utilized for voter verification or registration. It remains just a laptop. As such, they cannot be used to compromise our systems and undermine the credibility of the upcoming elections in December 2024. Welcome back to Key Point. So that was the minority earlier raising issues with the reports they had received that some five, seven biometric verification devices had gone missing. The Electoral Commission responded that indeed some items of theirs have gone missing, not BVDs, but laptops and uh, continuously makes that assurance that these laptops that have been stolen or missing cannot impact on our electoral integrity in any way and that the laptops don't contain sensitive information. That even if these BVDs have been stolen, they will need some activation code for it to work and so on. But that did not satisfy the concerns of some of the stakeholders in this election to the extent that we still have BVDs in the hands of persons who should not be having it. Now, after that press conference by the Electoral Commission, then there was a leaked, leaked internal memo detailing the fact that some 28 BVDs had not been returned to the store of the Electoral Commission's headquarters after the biometric voter the, sorry, after the uh, district level elections on the 19th in December last year. The question is, these BVDs that have not been returned to the chest of the Electoral Commission, where are they? 
is almost four months after this uh, district level elections. After this release of the Electoral Commission, what next? Because after this memo was leaked, the Electoral Commission issued another statement explaining why this leaked memo that confirms <coughs> that indeed some BVDs have not been returned to them is not really an issue. They say that this is an in internal procedure. It's only an asset management procedure. Let's take a look at the statement that the Electoral Commission issued explaining this. They say that they are hoping, hopefully, the Electoral Commission of Ghana can retrieve these unreturned biometric verification devices very soon. And goes on and on. Uh, and then some other matters as well that they raise. It will give you one, it says no compromise to electoral integrity. The BVDs integral to our electoral process are designed with sophisticated security features without the proper activation and official use within our electoral framework. These devices are essentially inoperative. The integrity of our elections therefore remains unassailable. Misinterpretations and clarifications. The circulated memo should be understood in its correct context. It is procedural document for asset management, not an admission of asset theft. Our uh, efficient tracking systems ensure that uh, return and accounting of all our assets, reaffirming our commitment to pr prudence with the use of the uh, funds. Security and usefulness of equipment want to assure the public that any equipment, if ever misplaced, and even in case of vandalism, cannot be utilized to undermine the credibility of our elect electoral process due to the advanced security protocols and activation requirements in, in place. And so that's the explanation that the Electoral Commission gave um, after all of this played out. But I'll, I'll start off with you, uh, Dennis, because, you see, the, uh, the BVDs, B, the, 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 the BVDs, no, no, it's, it's a, the BVDs have not been returned to chest, right? The Electoral Commission talks about the fact that, yes, this does not have any material impact on our electoral process. But if you look at the breakdown of where all the BVDs that have not been returned are, it's almost in all the 10 regions. That raises some concern, does it not? Well, worth it. I mean, <clears throat> I don't speak for the Electoral Commission. Indeed. And, and that's I, why I put all the statements yeah, and I'll there. Never, so I'll never speak to, seek to speak for the Electoral Commission. I, I have always made it categorically clear on this uh, platform, on TV3, all your shows, that um, the Electoral Commission has a mandate to deliver credible, transparent, fair elections for this country. And so at all times, for me, what is important is that when there are issues, all political parties are liberated to raise those issues. And then the Electoral Commission also has a mandate to clarify those issues. When I look at the clarification they've brought, it's sound. It, it, it makes sense. It adds up. I mean, um, even basic IT will tell you that even if you pick any of those guys, there's nothing you can do about it. What is crucial is the database itself. But laptop, even my laptop, if you steal my laptop today, you can't do anything with it. You can't have access to anything on, on my laptop. There's nothing you can do with it. You, you understand? Because uh, I, I work on a laptop, but it's only a transmitter uh, uh, gadgets. Everything is sitting in the cloud somewhere. It's when you have access to that cloud, you know, that you really have, have something on me. It even applies to our phones that, that we are holding. And it all depends on how it's configured. Because, again, I can pick on our Martin Kubu's laptop and probably have everything on it. Because he's probably put everything on his desktop or his documents mm -hmm. somewhere. But other people also just simply work on, on the cloud. And so if you pick their laptop, mm -hmm. they just have to log out on their phone or somewhere, and then everything is gone. It's mm -hmm. just a tool you are holding that doesn't matter. So, I mean, um, once I read the statements, I think I, my mind was at peace that really... Um, and if the, there's a BVD machine with a capable <coughs> electoral commission, it's the same electoral commission anyway. And so if they say they are internal processes, I don't see such a big deal. Yeah, unless really you are making it from the point of really not having enough insight into, 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 into some, of, some of these things. So it's completely, it's completely important that we, we bring these issues up 
I, I don't have any problem with the NDC bringing it up, honestly. Mm. They, they should bring it up. When they bring it up and the EC also comes to clarify, they can question the clarification on, on substance. I see. What I think we should avoid is conspiracy theories and those things they don't help. You know, those those things usually tend to only dent the the processes. If there are facts to the, material facts to it, you can raise it. I don't think there's anything wrong if they, they say ah there are some BVD machines we see an internal memo, an internal document that says it's not there. If they feel alarmed, they have every right to raise it. If the MPP identifies something like that, we will raise it. But it's important that the EC swiftly comes in to also clarify which they have done and I have read the entire statement. It's very sound and, and I don't think there is any 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 cause for alarm. I think we should continue like this. Especially in an election year, we should continuously engage. What we should avoid is to like they say in G, Chinchina like at all costs try to impugn, you know, some, you know, underhand activities in things that are obvious in terms of substance and fact that there's nothing there's nothing more to it, apart from the fact that maybe one region hasn't submitted their, their, their gadgets and another... It's actually not just one reason. If you look at the details of the statement that you, you, you indicate you have read, in the 10 regions, 28 BVDs in total mm. have yeah, not been yeah, returned. So, but it has no impact. So, for instance... In terms of substance, well, well, having, the, having, having the BVD... In fact, currently it's with the Electoral Commission. No BVD is missing. It's with the Electoral Commission. Except that it's at the regional level or at the district level. But they have not been returned. Yes, but it's not missing. The second point also is that even if it is missing, the substance here is even if you you break into the electoral commission today and sell BVD machines, could you use it to affect the integrity of the elections? I think these are the critical things okay. that we should we should be worried about. If we cannot use the gadgets, whether the laptop or the BVD, to affect the integrity of the elections, then really I don't think it's an issue. I, because I don't think that we are ruling out the fact that electoral commission assets can be missing. It can. It can be missing. You understand? Mm -hmm. There are people who, people, even police stations, mm -hmm. people go there to go and steal things. Yeah. Bank of Ghana, they have their bullion vase, people. So it could be missing. But what is important is that what systems have been put in place to ensure. And it's important that they've done that. It's important that the electoral commission system is structured in a way where even if you manage to steal, or pick or take any of these gadgets, you cannot use it to affect the integrity of the of the election. That I think is very important. But as to whether a gadget is missing, of course, in this case it's not missing. But mm -hmm. even if it is missing, the fact is that it, it is of no consequence to the electoral processes. That for me is, is very important. The reason why I try not to, and I say I don't speak for the electoral commission, is that uh, we always have our issues with the electoral commission as political parties. And I don't want to contradict myself. Because on any day that I have concerns with anything that the Electoral Commission is doing, I'll raise it. I was on the streets when we're doing Let My Vote Count. And I say Electoral Commission. And that is why any time I refer to Electoral Commission, I don't personalize it. It is the organization. So I remember, it is fresh on my mind, when the Electoral Commission of Ghana was actually adamant to our concerns and demands some few years ago. And at that time, the NDC, that today comes to raise press conferences every day, they were in support of them. Hmm. I will not come here and sit here today and come to be defending the same electoral commission. That was adamant to me some years ago. And then what? Three years down the line, I'll come and raise concerns. I won't do that. So I want to be put on record that the electoral commission is a referee. They are not my friends. I'm not related to them. My friends are in the MPP. My relations are the MPP. I have no ball to play with the Electoral Commission. Our political party has no, apart from a working relationship, in terms of we are players in the field that you are as an Electoral Commission, we have no other friendship relationship dealings with them. Hey, no business. bad channel communication. Nothing, zero. And hey, we you are, talk to and, them and behind no, the scenes. Nothing, and I'm very serious mm, about mm, it. Mm, okay. You mm. see, I'm serious about it because it's not that we, we, we belittle our systems and structures in this country. Alfred, you really think that in South Dai, the electoral commissioner, the, the, those people that are listed, they really have some big influence on Honorable Roxy in their post elections and oh. police station. Huh? They don't, please. Okay. I have been doing, okay. I am young, but I've been please. doing, oh, please hold on. Oh, all right. I am come, young, so I'll come to you. Mm. I am young, but I've been doing this election thing for, for a very long time. Ask him, he's here. So I don't want us to 
belittle the systems and structures that our country, our country has actually built, and, and, and ensuring that we strengthen organizations. What we should do is to constantly audit, query, and interrogate these institutions, but not seek to personalize these institutions. That is why I say that the same electoral commission that was adamant for which reason horse whips and hot water was poured on me on, on the streets of Accra, I will not come and sit here okay. and be, and be seek, seem to be speaking for them. But right. reading what they have written and hearing the complaints from the NDC, I think that the NDC's concerns should be settled now because they've explained that indeed we have some DVDs that have not been returned, but one, it is not missing. It is with the Electoral Commission, only at the regional level. Please join. Number Please two, join. our systems and structures are, and that was a very important additional clarification, our systems and structures are in a sense that even if you manage to steal my laptop or manage to steal my DVD, you cannot really do anything with it. And see, one of the reasons why it is believable what they are saying is that they even came to provide additional information that even the NDC didn't have. Because the NDC raised concerns about five or or so seven, this, seven okay. missing. But yeah. they have even come to give additional information. Mm -hmm. That that's not even the only ones we haven't received. Mm -hmm. There are even more that we haven't seen. Okay. I think that that sets us it. What is important is that mm -hmm. on the day of election 7th December, mm -hmm. there are BVDs that are not compromised. There are laptops that are not compromised. That would ensure that every citizen has one vote during the election. Thank you. And um, I think that's most important. Uh, thank, uh, that is miracles of Now, there was Um, people, there's mm. issue about the commission. Mm. The commission also having the responsibility to ensure that the person they work with have integrity so as not to even be compromised with information goes to people who would have access to these BVDs. Because if you look at the original breakdown of the BVDs that have not been returned to the Electoral Commission store as yet, mm -hmm. the Greater Accra region has. Uh, and Dr. Osai Kwapo is joining us. He's asking Greater for Akra a link. One. The, we'll, we'll get Dr. Osaku upon the link shortly to join us on Zoom. It says uh, Greater Accra 1, Eastern, Eastern Region 1, Western Eastern North 2, two. Western, Western Region 5, Central, Central Region 1, Volta Region 2, Upper East 3, three. Savannah Region 2, Northern, Northern 9. Northeast. That has the highest number of BVD that have not been returned. And Northeast Region 2. Okay. That D definitely, even with the Electoral Commission's explanation, the fundamental question is then interrogating mm -hmm. why do these BVDs have not been returned mm -hmm. and what has to be done going forward mm -hmm. after this statement was released, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, there's a, every reason to question the state of affairs now, right? Because you know that, uh, you know, putting it uh, mildly, no, the 2024 elections is like our second independence, right? <laughs> so anything that has the potential of derailing it is something that we have to interrogate well and then resolve. Yes, because we shouldn't leave anything to chance because even one single vote counts. So I mean, when I saw it, I was like, hey, yes, I agree. They should interrogate it. The AC should open its doors. Let the NDC see everything that is at, uh, NDC thinks is wrong, so that, I mean, That's confidence true. in the EC will be That's restored. True. Because it's all about confidence. We don't want any war drums. We mm -hmm. want, uh, they, I mean, looking at the nation, I've seen that the mood of the nation is changed. So let's not do anything to uh, derail or steal the sovereign will of the people. Yes, that's the way I see it. Mm. So I'm giving the, uh, what, support to the NDC that they should question and question, because the more they question, then the more we can get better answers. Because you see that the kind of information NDC as a collective uh, has, we as individuals and civil society organizations may not necessarily have. So sometimes we will have to come and stand behind them to uh, help them ask the easy questions because it's part of our democratic uh, culture. Mm -hmm. mm, so for me, that is what... So the question is, the end result is to ensure that the confidence within the commission is built Absolutely. ahead of this crucial election that we have ahead of us. Absolutely. Yes, we need that confidence. We need it so that there will be no opportunity for somebody to later say that, no, 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 every step of the way, there was never transparency, etc. right? Mm -hmm. Yes, so let's do it. Let's build confidence. That's very, very crucial so that 
the outcome will be easily accepted. Council, does this explanation by the EC, you said even that seven BBDs yes. were missing or yes. had not been returned to the chest of the EC. Yes. They come out and say, well, it's not even seven, it's more than that, yeah. 28, mm. and that our systems are, are robust in such a way that we're even able to track the fact that these BBDs have not been returned. You need activation codes to even get them active. And the BVDs have been structured in such a way that it doesn't compromise our electoral integrity in any way. Does that satisfy the concerns or, or the, the answers you were seeking from them? First of all, that response from the EC is um, unsettling. Why? Unsettling in the sense that the numbers that we had intelligence that were not available in respect of the machines, apparently was much more than that. Okay. This is an internal memo that you sent mm -hmm. out yourself. As part of the protocols for closure to any public elections, include the return to safety of these machines. So once these machines were returned minus this, it means it's a cause of worry to all of us. Mm -hmm. To the extent that it took head office to send a memo to remind the regional heads is, is what is troubling the NDC. It means that the regional heads don't have them. It, it means they don't have them. And, and oh, it, it means they don't have them. The, because head, of, head office has been waiting, hoping that perhaps it was some oversight and that the regional heads would, would have submitted them willingly. Maybe when they were called for a meeting, they would have brought them, so it was an oversight. But the DLEs were, were held in December, December 19th. December ended, January ended. So in February, they sent this memo around. Mm -hmm. I was hoping that the Electoral Commission would have responded and said that out of the 28 that we directed that it should be submitted, maybe 15 have been submitted. This number outstanding. But you don't tell us that your machines are robust and not. Who says? Even national security machines are hacked. This electoral commission, during the 2016 December general elections, they told us that their, their systems had been hacked. Please. Mm -hmm. Laptop contains database. Oh, please. Laptops. You see, they use the laptops for registration. Mm -hmm. The BVDs are different from laptops. You understand? Right. The verification machines are different from the laptops that are used to capture data. The laptops, the laptops contain the, the, the app for registration. All you need to activate it is an internet. When you have an internet, EC shouldn't tell me that it is so robust. Ah, do, you know people, do you know people who are, who are well, well skilled in IT matters? So no. the EC says that the laptop don't contain any database. So what were the laptops being used for? It, 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 it's another thing that when they tell you, that you feel like crying. They think that everybody is so naive and, and with all due respect and excuse my language, we are stupid. These are official laptops that officers use to capture data for purposes of your work. And they are missing and we are asking and say they contain nothing. Why, are you, why do you have them as laptops? Are they brand new laptops that you bought from? Uh, uh, Compu Ghana? No, these are working machines that have gone missing. They contain data. They don't want. They don't want to 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 admit that these these laptops contain data because they think that everybody will become apprehensive. But that is the fact. That is the fact. And, mm. and let me add, I, I, I'm one of the keen watchers of the EC in this country. I, I'm in court against them. Look, the politicization of the EC is a cause to worry. As mm. we speak, I'm in court in respect of the appointment of Dr. Apia Hini. And, and, and I'm anxious Selima. that no matter. Selima is not added, the lady. <clears throat> oh, no, I, I didn't, because I didn't have enough against her. Okay. But I have enough evidence, sufficient enough to proceed against Apia Hini. That matter is not, and, and so when you, when you, when you, 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 you add all this to these happenings, 
then of course you are worried that we must be careful so that the EC is not become a compromise a compromise referee for our upcoming elections mm -hmm. and 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 they are, they are, they are the EC is not being stable in terms of its decisions. Today, they want to add in the label ink. Tomorrow, they don't want to add it. Today, they want to, I mean, they are vacillating. They must learn to, to work within the rules that we are fashioning for them. CI 91, 126, 127. And the BVD machines are requirements of law. They must be protected. They are also not firing officers. There's no consequence. Mm. When you have a regional officer who is supposed to follow the protocol and submit machine, he has in that. Fire the person and hire a new person. These things are happening because no, no, nobody is being punished for exhibiting competence. Mm -hmm. Look, the January, the December 7th elections, like my senior Bebu said, it's our second independence. Mm. Hey, challenge, challenge. We, we, we will safeguard it. Hey with all that it takes mm. so okay. the ec must must the ec must rather learn to be an independent arbiter it will help them it will serve them but what what is not making them an independent arbiter assistant now what conduct has in your view compromised their independence at this point comments of high ranking officers for instance comments Dr. Srimbo, for instance, will say NDC is a threat to Ghana's democracy. What, what, what sort of comment is that? Uh, why, what, why do you speak such, in such terms? Mm -hmm. Is that what? NDC okay. is a threat to Ghana's democracy. Uh, it's not uh, the other one, the mm -hmm. professor. Rather. No. Yeah, the professor. No. Bosman. No, it's not Bosman. It's, ah. it's the big one. Oh. It's, it's, mm. Ah, why? Check. You can Google. So, or, or perhaps both of them said they are different. Okay, 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 okay. You understand? So when you antagonize a major political party this way, your conduct will watch your conduct and will be apprehensive when they, are, when they don't follow the letter of the law. Well, let, Dr. John Osai Kwapong is a fellow democracy and governance and at the Center for Democratic Development, CDD. He's joining us on Zoom. Dr. Osai Kwapong, appreciate you. Good morning to you. Good morning, Alfred. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for having me. Indeed. Thank you so much for making the time to join us. So, and you joined me at a, at a point when Amati Pebo was making the, the, his submission. But Dennis Miracles Abadji of the MPP, the end objective of all of this, in the view of all the persons who have spoken, is to improve the confidence in the electoral commission as an institution going into the election but does the posturing of the ec in any way raise concerns for you yeah thank you very much and as you and i have you know discussed a few times on your shoes uh we've we've you know that's that's the point it all boils down to you want to make sure that going into uh this crucial 2024 election uh, that confidence in the EC, trust in the EC is at, its, uh, is at its best. And I've repeatedly said that that is one of the challenges that the EC as an institution faces this year, particularly if you look at the most recent Afrobarometer from 2022. Um, the percentage of Ghanaians who say they trust the EC a lot is, is at an all-time low. So as it prepares itself to manage and deliver the 2024 elections, it is also carrying this burden of ensuring that all of its actions and inactions uh, do not further deepen this mistrust in the institution, but rather restores confidence and improves, and improves it. And so when these stories or when these issues emerge, you know, whether it's, you know, is it a missing laptop? Was, you know, what number was it? Um, you know, is it a BVR? Is it oh, whatever issues begin to emerge? For me, it is incumbent upon the EC to get ahead of these issues um, and these stories and to make sure that whatever explanations, uh, you know, are giving, uh, you know, are tenable. Yes, I understand that in, you know, in an environment of also very sharpened partisan edges, 
there would still be some lingering, you know, questions or some lingering, you know, suspicions. But when all is said and done, you want the EC to be more proactive. Because sometimes some of these stories come out as though uh, if it were up to the institution, um, we wouldn't know. And we just so happen to know because a question was posed in parliament or a letter found its way in the public domain or something found its way into the hands of either parliamentarians or citizens. And again, all of those things for me do not help an already difficult um, you know, situation that the EC as an institution uh, is. I mean, we are in, you know, we are in March. There's a number of months left, you know, before before the election. But I would hope that constantly as the EC works to deliver this election, they would also be, you know, mindful and guided by, um, you know, the atmosphere in which, you know, they are operating, which is not, you know, the, you know, the best. So every, every step of the way should be guided by do these actions, do these inactions reinforce, improve confidence and trust in the institution. Some way, somehow, and I don't know the genesis of it, but the more I reflect on our elections and, um, you know, the attitudes of our two major, you know, political parties, there's also this belief that win or lose is partly also a reflection of what an EC chooses to do or, you know, or not do. So again, you want to make sure that you allay the fears of the two main players that look, um, you know, you are truly an impartial arbiter in this critical, you know, um, part of our democracy, which is regular competitive e elections. That's why for me, the bedding, the questions would come, um, the angst would always be there, but the bedding is primarily on the EC to regularly allay everyone's fears. And it is their actions or inactions that would help all of those fears or all of those concerns go to an extreme minimal level where everyone starts feeling like, okay, we are going into this election knowing that both the process and the outcome cannot be called uh, into, into question. I see, but you make a point about the, the Electoral Commission conducting itself as a truly impartial arbiter. I mean, what actions and inactions would, as it were, send that strong signal? that unwavering uh, commitment of the EC to be a truly impartial arbiter, especially considering the presidents we've been used to in this country, at least, have been awake to elections in this country from, from the year 2000 to date, where every time the Electoral Commission will have to battle with the perception of it being, quote-unquote, in bed with the government or the political party in power. <laughs> what, what conduct would convince you, for instance, that the Electoral Commission is an impartial arbiter? So, for example, I'm very happy that the National Democratic Congress, our main opposition party, uh, decided to return to, uh, to IPAC. Dr. Farijan, in, you know, in the Constitution Day remarks, talked about the critical importance of IPAC in the sense that it is not there to, quote, unquote, instruct or tell the EC what to do. But at the same time, it provides an important platform for consensus building around important issues of how we conduct the, uh, the election. So for me, that is one platform that gives me that reassurance and that confidence from the, you know, from the EC in terms of how it treats all political parties, particularly the two main political parties gathered around the IPAC table around some of these critical, uh, some of these critical issues. So I'll give you a, a, an example. So if you remember in the limited registration exercise previously, where it was all limited to just um, the district offices, there were a lot of you know questions, issues raised about you know, accessibility, the burden on the voter to register in order to be able to exercise their fundamental constitutional right, et cetera, et cetera. But you, you notice that there has been um, at least an improvement on the EC's position where 
um, you know, in the next, you know, exercise that there will be additional, additional centers where if it is difficult for the voter to get to the district office, that there will be opportunities for, you know, that particular voter to register in other places within, you know, the, you know, the district. Again, for me, those are the kinds of things that, yes, so it doesn't fully expand it and say registration will be, cons you know, conducted throughout the constituency or at all polling stations. But at least when you, when I observe the softening of some of these originally, quote unquote, hardline positions, or it is this or nothing else, regardless of all the, you know, um, appeals and questions and, um, all of the things that are raised, for me, it, those things help build confidence because at least you know that the institution is listening, is paying attention, mm. is willing to work with all of the key stakeholders to build consensus without compromising its own independence and its constitutional charge as the one responsible for delivering uh, elections. So, so much, those are some of the things that for me, I look for and encourage, right? Uh, the easy, you know, to, uh, to, keep, to keep doing. I see. Now, uh, thank you very much for that input. And I'll just take a minute from Dennis Miracles Awaji on one thing that you mentioned that based on the details of the Afrobarometer survey, which is conducted by you in conjunction with other organizations, the percentage of people who say they trust the Electoral Commission is at an all-time low. I mean, what can the stakeholders, what should the stakeholders be seen to be doing to ensure that this, this trust and confidence in the AC is improved or increased going into this crucial election? Miracles, in a minute. Well, I, I don't know what it was in 2012 or what it was in 2016. So, really? This is uh, an, at an all time low. I don't know right? the figures. Maybe mm -hmm. if you can share all those figures, then we can really ascertain. Okay. But I don't know, I don't know what it was in 2012, 2016. So, I can't tell what is actually at an all time low. But I, I mean, I believe, Doc. But the point, the point here is that, I mean, I have told you Indeed. my issues with, 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 you know, electoral commission. And I think that as an organization, they have a responsibility to continue to improve. Okay. It doesn't mean that we should continuously wear them with, well, with that same cloth anytime an issue comes up. Right. In this particular instance, I read their response and I'm comfortable. Okay. I think it's, it's, it's fine. Right. But it means that, it doesn't mean that they should go to sleep. On a day-to-day basis, as an organization, especially being an habitat as they are, they have a responsibility to continuously improve and, and, and push a lot more confidence into the people. Their concerns being raised today about the electoral commission they are not different from the concerns we raised in 2012 in 2016 Alfred, yes it is the same allegations and you made a very important point about how you think that um the um ec is usually accused as being in bed with 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 the government of the day they have a responsibility it's their job okay. i don't work with the ec right it's their job to continuously ensure that some of these things are are, are, are improved but otherwise trust me there is nothing the, the EC is being accused of today that when we were accusing them in 2012 and 2016, Honorable Dafoe in the NDC did not so come to defend, defend them. Oh, no, 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 but but they have to improve. Indeed, they have uh, to improve. This issue of, of their trust and confidence, because if you talk about it being at an all time low, that's concerning. Uh, no, no, not just for the politics of it, but of our democracy as well, is it not? Maybe quickly before we go. Yes, you see, people are gauging you by conduct. Mm -hmm. and, and I. I, I mentioned the issue of the politicization of the recruitment, uh, populating the EC with persons who are politically tainted. Mm -hmm. When that happens, it erodes the confidence that people will have. When you do this, you are inviting me to come and do, 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 you know, you double, yeah, yeah, yeah. double okay, that, sorry. double that with the fact that there are very really disturbing developments. Machines are getting missing. Uh, machines yeah. are not missing. Oh. Okay. Machine, okay, machines are not able to be accounted for All right. within time frames that they are supposed to be. So it, it, it gives people, especially the, the, the opposition party like the NDC, cause to worry. Okay. Look, the EC must be like Caesar's wife. They must live above reproach. All right. If they do that, 
everybody will be happy with their work. Agreed. Okay, if thank you. You understand. Right. For instance, this issue about the indelible ink, a requirement of law, and then you are pushing that you will not apply it. As we speak, the district level elections that had been held 19th of December mm -hmm. 2023, it didn't go, it, they didn't apply the, the indelible ink. Should I go to the Supreme Court and have it struck down as invalid? But so you, you, you don't have to allow people when to have let to have to right. with you. you. Thank you, you very much. So, you. You Council, really, really appreciate this. And I, and I, and I acknowledge the case have that you have uh, as well in court oh, on this matter. Thank you. <laughs> you um, Bismarck <laughs> Apopi. The missing laptop is dangerous because what is needed for the laptop to function is just the registration software is sitting in the memory of the laptop. Bismarck. Thank you very much for this one. Um, this one also that came through, I'll just read it quickly. It said, Kovanah and Sun says that we must all know this, that the laptop is the gateway to the cloud storage. A hacker can easily access your cloud storage if he gets access to your laptop. So this is a concern that you're just bringing uh, Dennis's attention to on it as well. Let me acknowledge the 2,400 messages that we <laughs> We got today throughout the period of the show. I would want to say thank you very much to as many of you who sent the messages and um, the ones I was able to read. And then also do they include the national service persons? They are suffering, though. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I have been, been very consistent. No, I, I, I raised the issue. On I have the been floor. consistent on the amount. I raised the issue on the floor. They, they, that's when they, they were there. owed four months. Yeah. 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 Mm. Cons consistently raised the yes. issue. They paid them two months. They have two months left, and mm. so on. Mm. So it's something that yes, I raised. We will stay was, the I was informed. Thank that you very much. They'll pay some. Yes, okay. indeed. Appreciate yeah, it. Overspending. Um, Dennis See where landed at. Awadi <laughs> is hmm. the Peace spokesperson for Peace the Peace. Dr. Mm. Mahmoud Obamia campaign mm. team. He is a former MC of the campaign <laughs> North. <laughs> and then, are you still at the Judicial <laughs> International Committee? Yes, I am. I see. He's right. also the campaign spender for Dr. Baumia. Campaign spokesperson. It's spender. Yes. He spends the money. Hey, man, also, he's we in France. What is Martin Bebo? Thank you very you much. You disperse. Martin Bebo <laughs> is private legal <laughs> practitioner. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Go he is uh, the leader of the Kobe Preco Reloaded Demonstration. Also, and one of the leaders of the individual bondholder groups. Council, we'll talk about the status of this. Bonds matter yeah. next week because yeah. I received the asset declaration. Uh, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. is next running week, away next from week, oh, this he, is on the table. Oh, okay. but I told you it's, it's ready. So. Council uh, Nelson uh, Rossin H. Uh, Dafia uh, Mekpo, also, thank you very much. Oh. He is and he has a, the plaintiff to the case involving the attorney general and the speaker of parliament. He's a member of parliament for the South Dai constituency, he's a private legal practitioner, one of the sponsors of the anti LGBTQ plus bill. Dr. John Osai Kwapong, I would want to say thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. And then also to you, Justice, uh, Dr. Justice Srim Sai, private legal practitioner and a lecturer as well. Uh, the Honorable Samuel Atachia, we had a little connection with a problem with him, but at the point was able to also join us. Thank you very much for the patience as well to join us. On behalf of the rest of the team, uh, James Tete, Samo Ametepe Adam, Gertrude Oforiwa Brakom, and then also Leslie Kujo, Deborah Abba Mansa, Seth Jan, and uh, Dick, Dick Mauto, Justice Akwedo, with my producer uh, Abdallah. Uh, thank you very much as well to the, all the team members for this morning. I was clothed this morning by Mali and Express. You can look up for them on social media, Mali Express, M-A-L-L-I Express. I am out for the concept. Do have a great weekend.